All right, welcome. I think we are live for this Sunday evening, April 15th. Today would have been tax day here in the States, but you have until Tuesday. I got to do one last thing on my taxes before I forget tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, so happy almost tax day. How's everybody doing this evening? An informal chat for tonight, a little bit of car tech. Um, so we'll chat a little bit. Hello, Tim. Tim F. is in the house. What's up, man? How are you? Hope you're having a terrific day, evening, or wherever you're at. Um, it was the last couple of days was nice, but um, it's raining. Snow Tuesday. Ooh. Yep. April snow showers bring May flowers. That doesn't sound right, does it? Anyway, how are you, Tim? I am drinking uh, sparkling water. Uh, grapefruit. Picked this up at Big Lots. Um, I suppose I should have chilled it first. But no calories, so sugar-free. I guess it's good for you. Cheers. So what's new, Tim? Too much snow. Minneapolis got about 15 inches. Are you kidding me? 15, ugh. Friday, Saturday, ugh, ugh. I don't know, man. It seems like Mother Nature has its share of bugs, as in OS bugs, right? Hi, Highland. 15 inches? God, yeah, it is spring. But it's not. Highland, you got a Hackintosh. Work in Hackintosh fabric. So far, it's great. I have started using it as a main. Okay. Cool. You had a tornado warning. Uh-oh. Hey, you get a warning. That means it's going to happen. So be careful. You get off the stream, Highland. And that's serious stuff if that's, if, that's what you're, if that's what it is, a tornado warning. Yeah. Very serious. Be careful. Hello, Timo. Been very busy, just wanted to say hello. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I try to do these streams at different times to uh, have everybody get a chance to stop in and say hello. I didn't do anything Friday or Saturday. Um, it was not a good week last week. Anyway. North of the Twin Cities, about 140 miles, and got about a foot. Ooh, man, I know. It's April. It's Where's spring? Spring's not good enough no more. It should be fall, winter. I want summer starting in March. Forget about spring. Forget about it. And just give me summer like now. You know, now until October. Tornado passed you? Okay, all right. Yeah, warnings. Watch. A watch means it may happen, right? A warning is it is going to happen, right? I think that's what that means. I get those sometimes alerts on my phone. Um, I think we have a flood warning here in Ohio. Um, anyway, I won't check it now, but yeah, you got to be careful. Uh, the Mac OS experience feels great. Okay, cool. Der, Tur Der Turco. How? Hello from Germany. Wow. Everybody, please say hello to Der Turco from Germany. Nice. I have a friend that lives in Munich. Nice. Everybody, please say hello to Der Tuko, if I said that right. Uh, your wife, Tawny, Ta Ta says hello. Says, hey, hey, what's up? Hi, Tawny, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, Kagan, good evening. Now, we had a good Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but... Um, I'm looking at the forecast for Pittsburgh. Uh, flash flood watch. Lows in the 40s. Not good. Uh, tomorrow, highs in the 40s. Tomorrow night, chance of rain showers. Lows in the 30s. Tuesday, a chance of snow showers. Oh, goody. So, yeah, it's... um, It sucks.
Der Turco, what, uh, which part of Germany are you from, Der Turco? And uh, let's see. Uh, Guten Tag. I think that means hello in German, right? Guten Tag. I hope, it's, I hope that means hello. If not, I'm in trouble. I think it means hello. That Elvis. Grub got. That's what it looks like. KO 2610 says good night. Well, if you have to go, then good night. What's the weather like in Germany? I don't speak German. You're teasing your cousins back east for not making the move out west. Ah, they thought the weather would be worse out here. Out well, out there where you're at. Um, sometimes. Um, I miss Florida. I miss the flat roads, no potholes, and tropical scenery. Um, it's hot in the summer. You can get storms. Um, I don't know. if is there is there a perfect location on planet Earth? I don't know. I have to think about that one. Guten Tag is a good day. Or you can say, hello. Okay, for hello. Very good. So, der terco, hello. Uh, Tim F, best wiper blood. Yes, just an informal chat tonight. I'll uh, I'll share you a video of silence, which is good. I almost bought Rainex. My son said to try Rainex, but I found a better deal. Excuse me. I think I bought Michelin blades. I am. I never had Michelin blades before, but I'll talk about that in a second. I'll share a video with you. So. Hi, Steve. Snowing in Chicagoland. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the weather, man. It's, it's, um, you know, maybe it is global warming. You no, know, global warming isn't just about warming. It's more about an imbalance of nature, hot and cold. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Consistent weather, not in East Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. No, did not think so. Yeah. Yeah, Florida gets humid. If you don't like humidity, stay out of Florida. But man, in the winter time, it's nice. It is really, really nice down there. Snow here in Minnesota is wet. Heavy stuff. Yeah. Heart attack. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. You get that um, combination of ice, slush. Yeah, you got to watch. Um. Their Turco is from North Rhine Westphalia. Their Turk I'm not sure where that's at. Is that north or south of Munich, Berlin? I'm sorry, I don't know I don't know that one. Um anyway, welcome. And what Linux do you use? If I may ask. And have you heard of a friend of mine named Stephanie Forian? She is a singer. Uh, popular independent singer there in Germany around the Munich area. Uh, Stephanie Forian. I don't know if you've heard of her, but I just thought I would mention the name. Mother Nature is bipolar. Yeah, really. I'll we'll give this a few more minutes and now we'll talk a little bit about Wiper Blade. Just the off topic for tonight a little bit of car tech. Uh, ground is warm, so the bottom half to one inch is heavy slush. Uh, yeah. Heart on the back, knees, and heart. Yeah. Need to watch. Um, it's deceiving because you may see the, the soft, powdery snow on the top, but then you go to shovel. Yeah, that's why I take it slow. If I'm not sure, take it slow. And if it's heavy, I just, I just chop it up, stop, and go from there. Uh, but you need to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rylan Flaz. Rylan I've been watching National Geographic has had some really good shows um, about uh, historical stuff, Nazi Germany still, stuff I didn't know about, uh, you know, World War II and the Eagle's Nest and all that stuff. Fascinating stuff uh, of our human history, World War II. Um, 
If he's in Germany, he's probably running Nopix Linux. I don't know. De Turco, uh, let us know what you use. And if you use Windows, that's okay. I use Windows also. Don't be shy. Um, I dual boot usually. Uh, or if you're a Mac user, that's okay. Uh, just out of curiosity, what you use. Wow, Manjero Mate. Okay. What made you pick that one? I would never have guessed that one. Mate is a good desktop environment. That's what I use. I don't have screen sharing on right now, but that's what I use. Cool. Is it stable enough for you? Awesome. Time is it 8.20? Okay, we'll give this maybe 10 minutes. This was unscheduled. And then uh, I'll share with you a video of my thoughts on Michelin wiper blades. So. Don't know if you can hear the background music. It's from the YouTube audio library. Featuring uh, most of the music is from uh, Silent Partner. And it's free to uh, download. YouTube audio library. Mate is terrific. You reinstalled Ubuntu Mate today. All right, Spin. Uh, let's see. We got about 10 days, 11 days uh, for the um, LTSs to come out. Manjaro developed out of Germany? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. It just wasn't for me when I tested it in my, one of my machines. Uh, was it last summer or summer before I lost track? I did I did a full install and I didn't like it, yeah. Stuck with Ubuntu Mate, Linux Mint, Ubuntu, stuck with Debian based. Uh, my first trip into Linux was in 06 with Ubuntu. Speaking of Ubuntu, check out this morning's uh, live event I had. I had a recording of uh, Alan Pope. He is a Snap Package Developer Advisor for Ubuntu. And we spoke for about an hour. So check that, check that out um, from this morning. Fat else you can't hear it over at Lawrence Welk in the other part of the house. Ah, Lawrence Welk. <laughs> I remember Lawrence Welk. MX-17 is good, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Manjaro's origin, Aust Austria. Germany and France. Ah. Hmm. I got a friend who's from Vienna, Austria. She's a Mac user. <laughs> yeah. The movie Casino, uh, they mentioned my name Carmine. Well you know you need to show you need to show respect for the Godfather, okay? Show respect to the family. Don't forget that. We'll take care of you. You know, speaking of my name, uh, Dertarko Yulamate with Time Shift Manjaro Rock Stable. Okay. A lot of people could not pronounce my name. When I lived in Orlando, um, yeah, my name is Carmine, like that car is mine. So, you know, some of my friends call me Carm, Carmen, CP, my initials. I had a package from UPS. This was early 90s. Knocks on the door. Open up the door. Hi, package for Carmini. Carmini? <laughs> so I just, yeah, my name is Carmen. Just, that's fine, yeah. Not Carmini. Now watch that guy who's watching this show. I'm making fun of him. Sorry, it just kind of was funny. Steve, your father was born in Graz, Austria. Nice. My friend Amy is from uh, Vienna, and uh, she used to work with the government, the uh, U.S. Embassy. Uh, let's see, uh, Lake Lake Fuchsia, I think it's called, is very popular, very nice over there in Austria. Steve, Lake, I think it's Lake Fuchsia. Uh, Kagan, it's like watching Joe Pesci get 
kill with a baseball. <laughs> Robert De Niro. You mean Joe Pesci? What do you mean? You talking to me like Joe Pesci? What do you mean, Joe Pesci? I mean the guy that's the free, freaking morons and morons. See what I'm saying? It's my Joe Pesci impression. Here we go, the jokes. At least we're not talking about food tonight. The difference between Lawrence Welk, orchestra, and a moose. I'll bite. What, Tim? Good guess, Fat Elvis. Love this music. We're waiting, Steve. What's the payoff? What's the joke? Looking at the ticker, Russia to block Telegram app over encryption. Of course they would. Lawrence Welk wasn't known to be too nice of a guy. Uh, I don't know. I went to a wedding there once. Uh, 90... 192. A friend of mine got married. It was The, the reception was at the Lawrence Welk Resort in San Diego, if I am not mistaken, a golf, nice sprawling golf country club facility, very nice, uh, that I can remember. Um, I think it's San Diego, yeah, but that's all that I know, to be quite honest, so. All right, at 8.27, we'll give it three minutes, and I'll share with you my thoughts on a little bit of car tech wiper blades. You know, decrypt telegram, we send Boris to the house. Yes, Boris says, I must break you. Anybody catch the new Lost in Space redo again? <sighs> yeah, that's exciting going now. I think the Star Trek reboot is better, in my opinion, between the two, but just my personal opinion. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see. Do, do, do. Let me screen share over here. Uh, did I show a trailer of my dad's movie? Yes. Did you miss it, Tim? All right, give me a second here. Let's see if I can bring it up. Um, I did. It was... Um, not, I think it was two Fridays ago when I had um, I had Joe Panico on as a guest host. Um, hang on, if you give me a moment, Tim, let me find it here, and uh, I'll be happy to show it again. Der Turco, you Ubuntu Mate, also Gold Standard Distro. Uh, you you Germans are smart, unbelievable over there. Steven Anderson. Uh, the last live stream this morning, that was Alan Pope. He is from Ubuntu, from the UK. Uh, he's a package, snap package advisor, or snap package advocate. He's been with Ubuntu, I forget what he said, he's been with Ubuntu 10 years, something like that. But that was Alan Pope. Uh, nice friendly chat. All right, let me do this here. So, move this down here. Huh. 
All right. Let me um let me get to the topic at hand here. Then I'll show you the uh, trailer for my dad's movie, Tim F. Okay, so um, give me a second here. Let me turn off, shut off the ticker for now. All right, let me screen share. Let me um, pause the music. All right, here comes Tunnel Vision. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. <laughs> All right, that's just Google Hangouts. Do not adjust your screen. We are controlling it. We are the Borg. You will be assimilated. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll show you the trailer here after I'm done talking. Don't make me forget, Tim, okay? Um, wiper blades. You know, cheap blades are not worth it. Um... You put them on, they, they squeal off the bat, they skip, they rub, they don't sound right. Uh, there is a difference. I was going to buy Rain-X wiper blades. And um, I think my son has them on his car. But I decided to try Michelin. Uh, Michelin had some high ratings. Of course, Michelin makes tires. I know they make, they make decent tires. So I thought, let me buy some uh, Michelin replacement wiper blades. It was my first time. I think they were like 20 some bucks. They were $10 each or something like that. They were very easy to put on. So I put them on and let me share with you a video. What I'm going to do is uh, just grab my mic and move it to my speakers. And you tell me if, 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 you, hear, if you hear anything. These are the new wiper blades I put on. Um, I think it was Friday when it was a bit sunnier outside. Uh, so let me play the video. And you guys tell me what you think about these new blades. I don't hear anything. Excellent. I'll play the video again. All right, here we go. I don't hear anything. Excellent. And that was my unscientific test of the Michelin wiper blades. I know it's kind of difficult to hear over the, the handset mic speakers, but yeah, I put them on. I didn't hear anything. I really, I could barely hear the motor, uh, hear the wipers. Probably the quietest set of wiper blades <laughs> I put on in, I don't know, five years, six years, maybe more. So for my tests on my Buick, with the cracked side glass, thank you, GM. Uh, I I give Michelin wiper blades two big thumbs up. Uh, they're awesome. The quietest blades I've ever put on a car. So check out Michelin wiper blades. All right. Let's see, Tim, my dad's uh, film trailer. Let me play the trailer. For those of you that missed it, and uh, we'll talk about it. It's based on a true story. And uh, let me go ahead and play it. And uh, then we'll go from there.
è stato durante 16 anni, malgrado la nostra politica, un nemico irreconciliabile del partito. All right, I hope you guys were able to um, see and hear that. So, Tim, yeah, that was the trailer I played uh, for the first time. It was a world premiere on YouTube about a couple weeks ago here on YouTube. Uh, based on a true story about the largest Italian uh, concentration camp, uh, World War II, that saved the lives of thousands of Jews. It is an untold true story. Uh, I'm surprised Hollywood has not told it before. It it just it just simply amazes me. It's a it's it's an emotional story, and um, the movie. Let me get out of this here. Uh, okay, there we go. the uh, The movie tells the story, a true story of a of a Catholic priest, a modern day Catholic priest who never knew he was he, he never knew he was Jewish until the end. Um, it was basically uh, not his fault. He was living a lie, and he finds out that his father, who he never met, was a uh, a Jewish survivor from that camp, um, and he has to come to terms of who he is. And basically, without spoiling it, uh, this priest finds his answer. God will, God sends him an answer between the cross and the star, and that's the name of the title of the movie, The Cross. Like the cross of Jesus, star of David, the cross and the star in Italian, la croce e la stella. Um, uh, thank you, Tim. Yeah, there was a there was a private VIP premiere in Rome um, by invitation this past uh, Monday. Yeah, it was this last Monday. A private, I guess, it went very well. It was standing room only. Um, it was for the local people there, for the Italians and the Jewish community. I guess they really loved it. Uh, the film has been endorsed by the Jewish community, by the Vatican, by the um, uh, something about the bishops of Italy or something. Uh, they recommend the film. As far as the distribution deal, none yet. Um, he's waiting for an offer. He has not received a reasonable offer. You know, it's kind of like the golf. Uh, we're gonna uh, let's let's talk reasonable. He hasn't received that reasonable offer. He's been offered to sell the movie outright to sell his rights to the film, uh, and he's not gonna do that. Uh, I mean, it's it's going on seven years now. He almost died making the film. The film director is fighting cancer, uh, so it's a miracle they pulled it off. Uh, it's a miracle that the people love it. Uh, it's a miracle of the talent uh, in this movie. The uh, music composer who did the music for the movie, he did the music for the Vatican documentary that was well received. His name is Sandro Di Stefano. You can look him up on YouTube if you want to send him a like. I'll put his name here. Sandro Di... Uh, I believe he speaks English. So if you want to say hello and you heard his music or something on YouTube or... Um, on um, Facebook, but that's his name. That's the he's won he's won one or two foreign Academy Awards uh, for soundtrack uh, composition. Super talented, a humble uh, man. I haven't met him yet. But anyway, as soon as my dad can get a deal, 
you guys will be the first to know, one of the first to know. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, the Fest Film Festival, yes, he has tried that. We, we've tried this year. We've tried a couple, uh, no luck yet. It's hard because I independent films don't have the backing of, say, you know, Steven Spielberg or a big company. It's, it's tough. It's a long shot. But he has a story that nobody else has. It has not been told before. It's an emotional story. It's a true story. Catholic saving Jews. It's a wonderful story that, um, I mean, when's the last time you heard of a movie about a concentration camp that saved people? I haven't heard of it. So anyway, that's it, Tim. So yeah, um, I'll let you know. I spoke to my dad today. He's been on and off the phone trying to talk to people, cut a deal here and there. It's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. Anyway, so that's where we're at. Tony Simmons, hello, welcome. DT, did I catch you? Hi, DT. Distro 2, everybody say hello to Derek. Um, Jack, J-A-C, Jack. Jack, do you use Jack in Linux? Sorry. Um, yeah, absolutely. He says, hi, Toss and friends. We're all friends here. Mm -hmm. You are welcome, Tim. Um, yeah, I really can't share anything more obviously, uh, for um, copyright reasons, you know, for legal reasons, but at least that trailer gives you a hint of what's going on with the movie, but um, anyway, yeah. DT, would you like to join the Hangout? Um, I'm on Google Hangouts. If you want to join, that's, uh, that's fine with me. I won't be on too much longer. Just send me an email. I'll send you the private link if you want to join. It may be they think it's an Italian Schindler's List. Um, I had one or two friends mention that. Um, yeah, it's not as uh, violent as Schindler's List. I mean, the it's not a big Hollywood s spectacle. I mean, Schindler's List cost how many tens of millions? You know, it had the backing of Steven Spielberg, but um, yeah, this is just an independent film shot in Italy on location uh, and around the, there's also a museum there. But yeah, Schindler's List would probably be a pretty good analogy. I think that's a movie about a gentleman who also tried to save lives. And I believe Schindler, Oscar Schindler, I think he was a German businessman. I am not mistaken. That movie came out in the nineties. I think it won an Oscar, an Oscar too, didn't it? I can't remember. But yeah, uh, Schindler's List is a pretty good, pretty good analogy in terms of the emotion of the, of the um, movie. Hello, Ben. Uh, Ben, if you want to join, that's fine. Oh, uh, uh, the email is total OS today one as in number one, total OS today one at gmail.com. You lost the turn all the distro hopping this month. Hang on. I have the doctor of a, of a very good psychologist here somewhere. I, all this paperwork is, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, TotalOS Today1 at gmail.com. I'll stick around for a little bit more. It won Best Picture, yeah. Um, Schiller's List, yeah. I wish my dad had Steven Spielberg to back him up on this one. Mr. Spielberg, if you're watching this, trust me, it's a wonderful emotional movie. It's making my female friends cry. And they've only seen the snippet, a little snippet of the movie. So trust me, you're gonna, it's, it's a wonderful movie, human story. It's beautiful. I can't say enough for the soundtrack. It's it's one of those soundtracks that stays with you when you leave the theater. I mean, I first heard the soundtrack last year. Last year, I can't get it out of my mind. It's so beautiful, haunting and angelic. And anyway, so yeah, send me the email. I'll check it here in a second. Um, Tornado mystery fat Elvis. Yeah, don't mess with that. You get a warning, man. You take shelter. Um, Labor Linux, the best wiper blades. I like Michelin. Excuse me. I like Michelin. I put them on my car. I can't hear them wipe. I mean, they're that quiet. So my first time trying Michelin, 
I'm not being sponsored or paid by Michelin, just you know, full disclosure. But yeah, they're freaking awesome. So try the Michelin Blade. I think they're like, um, they come at different prices, but I think the ones I got were $10 each or something like that. Um, I should have posted a link, but just if you check the link below in the show notes, I posted a general um, affiliate link for Amazon. Just search Michelin, you know, wiper blades and yeah, don't spend more than 20 some bucks, um, something like that. Okay, let me check my email here and see what we have. guess I should get the link first what is the link uh, there we go yeah I've been watching National Geographic lately on uh, the history of Germany World War two and Nazi it's it's Stuff I didn't know. Okay. All right, Derek, give me one second. If you haven't already, guys, check out DistroTube on um, on YouTube. Duh. There you go, Derek. Ben, give me a second. Okay, you should be getting those here in a minute or less yeah check those links here Derek and Ben um, but uh, yeah Michelin wiper blades um, I'm impressed I don't impress easy but um, anyway I got those put on I had to order my driver's side window glass cracked from the cold weather. It's never, ever happened before. I called a friend of mine who owns a body Howdy, shop. Howdy, Tass. Ben, what's happening, man? Oh, you wouldn't believe the insanity I've gone through tonight and uh, this past couple days. I am installing KDE4 on Gen 2. Oh, talk about a nightmare. Like I said, I have the, I have the phone number of my psychologist. He's very good. No, just kidding. But the... <laughs> that's I have to now. The reason I'm doing plasma four is totally because, um, you know, I just I had an easier time with it. I mean, okay, you know, it's it's you know, plasma five to me is good, but ironically, it just looks better in four. And I had an easier theming time with it. I had a lot of, um, I guess I just had a lot of, I had a lot of, um, I just, it was a better desktop for me all around. I mean, okay. there's nothing all wrong right. with, there's nothing wrong with five, but, but like I said, four is just, it's better on resources and other things. So, okay. so you're uh, messing with Gen 2? Yes, sir. Wow. It took me. It took me like, uh, yeah, it took me, well, I just got the base install done today, and then now I'm doing the desktop, so it didn't take me that long, but it was, um, it was tedious, I will say that, and I already had part of it done from a few days ago, but I just, I had some other things I had to do, so I had to... But I just finished it. I don't have Network Manager running. I'm using only WK Supplicant right now. All right. But uh, and I do have a dual boot on it of Windows Seven because you see, cool. I just bought this uh, Windows Seven retail disc OEM. Ah. It was twenty five dollars off of eBay, maybe twenty. Uh, Windows uh, Seven is good. It's still good. Yeah, yeah it's good. And I know it's only supported natively for two more years, but... Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah, but I don't plan to upgrade this laptop to 10 until it fully stops because, I mean, it still works, so okay. why would I? I think uh, Derek's going to join us here in a second. He has to mm-hmm. install Chromium. I think he's messed with Gen 2 before. He does only Linux stuff usually. We'll see what yeah, he says. That's but, okay. uh, well, I could say I mess with Gen 2 stuff, but it's on my Android mm-hmm. phone. Ha ha. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> that's as far as I go with Gen 2. You see, 
Gen 2 is not for the masses. It's really no, not. No, it really isn't. Yeah. Uh, something to it's, like it's, tinker. It's, yeah. for, it's for the tinker at heart, which mm -hmm. is something I... That's that's me, though, personally. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I had a mm -hmm. driver's side glass crack on my car from the cold. Anyway, oh, I called a friend of mine. Right. He owns a body shop. They're like, 200 bucks, mm -hmm. really, for that small piece of glass? Says, that's yeah. sad, man. <laughs> so anyway, but he says, wait, wait, you know, plus slave, but he won't charge a lot because he's a friend of him, but still, but he says, well, I'll give you a phone number of a, uh, mm -hmm. of a place, I think he says mm -hmm. in Philly. He says, try it. He says, do you want a used one? I said, as long as you're safe. He says, yeah, I trust it. I call Anyway, I called this guy up Friday. He's going to set me a used one for $85 shipped. I'm like, I'll take it. He says, guaranteed against cracks. I said, sold. So there we go. Wow. And, 200 uh, bucks. That's almost as much as the windshield. Whatever. Yeah, well, uh, so I built this Core 2 Duo machine, but uh -huh. the Core 2 Duo was running really warm after like a couple of hours, like maybe three or four, maybe uh -huh. less. So I upgraded it to a Core 2 uh, quad CPU, uh, which is a quad core processor, what have you. Yeah. And. The sad thing was was that um, was that uh, was that my stock Intel heatsink and fan, the little prongs beneath them, the little feet, did not want to uh, did not want to stay on there. Hi, Derek. Hey, Derek. How you doing, buddy? Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, the little stock Intel fan mm -hmm. things yeah. did not want to. Stay uh -huh. down, so I had to, uh, I had to buy a third-party cooler, which is coming tomorrow. Uh, so okay. luckily, I can get back up and running. Right okay. Quickly. Derek, what are you using now? We can't, can't hear, hear you, brother. <laughs> can't hear you, Derek. Yeah. We can't hear you, dude. Uh, is he always like distro hopping or something? Uh, yeah, he was for a while. I don't know. I don't know what he's on right now. Yeah, it's hard hey, can you hear me now? Hey, perfect. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I've hopped about uh, every week in the last five weeks. I've been on wow. something different. This week, Jeez. I'm on Arch. Okay. How was that going for you? Um, uh, Arch is, is cool. You know, I like Arch. I've installed it before. Uh, the problem is it's such a minimal install doing a regular Arch install is you don't realize how much stuff there is to install in Linux. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. uh like I'm still finding stuff I don't have on this uh, install, and I'm, it's been five days now. Yeah. I don't have an image viewer, PDF viewer. I didn't have a. Uh, you don't got nothing. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. Because when lot. you install Arch, after you go through the base install, all you have is the command prompt. You've installed no graphical applications at all. Oh, oh that's wow. Like, that's yeah. like, that's about as minimal as you can get, DT. Yeah, you yeah. you have to install Xorg. You know, after you. Oh do my that. God. <laughs> Yes, let me put that on my newbies channel. New no problem. No, I don't think so. You know, I shouldn't be laughing about distro hopping because I was once like you, yeah. multiplied by 10 when I started back in 06, who knew very little about it. And none of my friends had a freaking clue. Hmm. So I did it on my own. So I used to have stacks and stacks of bootable, you know, CDs, DVDs. Oh, so I make fun of you guys, but I should make fun of myself first and then you, you know. Been there, done that. Not as much. Not as much anymore. It's just not necessary because I'm comfortable with Debian base or Ubuntu oh, yeah. base. Yeah. And I, w I was the same way. When I started, I distro hopped all the time, and then it, I, yeah. it got tiring to where I never hopped. I installed something on a machine. It stayed there. Yeah. You know, I never changed. And now because of doing this channel that I do, I hop a lot because of that. But if I wasn't doing these YouTube videos, I wouldn't bother hopping. Yeah, I install yeah. something and just stick with it. Right. Yeah, it's I, I I made this channel kind of like a well, I mean it's for newbies, for beginners, kind of like a sanctuary for those people who maybe went to a forum and maybe the forum was not friendly. We know what I mean. So yeah, I, I exactly. try to try to stick with um, these shows that I think are beginner friendly. Every once in a while, I'll branch off and try like Arch based, like Manjaro. But um, yeah, it's you know Linux desktop there's a lot of choices man so for a you know for a beginner it can be it can be overwhelming yes and i would i will tell yeah. people that want to try arch manjaro mm -hmm. and antragos are, are where you need to be one of those mm -hmm. uh the only reason i did a, a mainline arch install is because i wanted a minimal install because of something i was doing uh, this okay. month on the channel living in the command line basically i didn't mm -hmm. want a graphical environment installed 
But for most people, Anjaro or Antragos is really where you want to be. Yeah, tested an Antragos looks look pretty good. Isn't that the one when you can choose between five different desktop? Yeah, environments? they offer like six or eight okay. in the color. Deepin, Mate, XFCE. I think Debian Maybe. does that too. If if yeah. you do Net Installer, Debian, I believe it does. It has some choices. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if I could recommend that for beginners off the bat. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. it's it's solid. It's solid. And I um, will say, uh, like I said before, guys. Um, if you're looking for something newbie, don't go Gen two. <laughs> no, no. Even the even the friendly ones like Redcore and Sebion and Calculate, uh, maintaining a Gen two system is is difficult. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're like me and know what the heck you're doing. Yeah. Mm, no, I'm not even gonna go there with Gen two. I'll keep it. Uh, I think uh, keep as it as far friend. as risks go, I'll do Arch base like Banjero. Or I did Banjero yeah. and mm -hmm. Turgos. But those usually have user-friendly installers, GUIs, right? You know, so yeah, a, a beginner can yeah. It's not yeah, like totally a beginner. Yeah, if you're if you're really mm -hmm. like dangerous and you want to try yeah uh, something you know arch based when you're just starting out, I would say you know this is just my two cents. I would say go Manjaro, and then if you want to take it the next step, um, do Antergas, and then maybe you know yeah pure arch if you're really brave but i would wait on <laughs> yeah if you're gonna go with minimal installers or you know these strobes that do not have newbie friendly installers do not attempt to dual boot just get a spare no. machine if you can and yeah. that way you yeah, know like me what i was saying with know. my uh, core 2 machine just get one of them you know get a uh get a core 2 quad at least because like i said yeah when i had a core 2 um Right. Duo, you're you're asking for trouble. <laughs> I don't recommend boot lo or du dual booting uh, at all, regardless of distros you run. Well, yeah, I mean, it can it's, work, but it's it's asking for more trouble. Than it's it's not my number one way. Although I'm, it's 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 funny you mentioned that, Derek. There's been a few videos now that uh, like yeah. dual booting is evil. Dual booting yeah. is for schmucks. I'm like, time out, time out. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Oh, all right. Well, I, I, I'm not against it on principle. All it's right, the yeah. fact that one of the OSs is, is going to hose the other one eventually. You're going to have some yeah. bootloader problems. You know that yeah, Windows that's, update that's, is, yeah. Yeah. There I've been dual booting for it. years, and I've yeah. had two issues. I think in since '06, yeah. I've been doing this. Two issues. One was Windows's fault. Yeah. One was Linux's fault. That right. is true. The, the the dual booting is probably not the best way, but to say it's unsafe mm. or it's not entirely a now obviously if if you're gonna try doing with Arch or Gentoo no, but a user friendly installer like the Ubuntu's, yeah. you know you can use the automatic installer. From my experience, yeah. they are usually safe, not always, but for me they're like ninety nine percent safe. But yeah. that being said, no matter what you use, back up and then back up again on multiple external drives no matter Multiple what even if you don't do the right right i don't use software to back up i use external drives in fact i, I bought a toshiba I, I i've yet to test external drive uh but i have no problem mm -hmm. recommending newbie friendly distros for dual booting if you want to do that mm -hmm. but you know if you can't afford a spare machine try it on a usb stick first yeah, yeah. well there's always the option if your laptop still comes with a uh Mm -hmm. With uh, um, what you call it, a um, a optical drive. There's always the chance that you know you could have a technician or do it yourself. Get a let's get a um, a uh, hard drive holder like a caddy, yeah, and then put in yeah. an extra hard drive, and then you don't have to worry about tricking down your Windows drive, possibly right. screwing something up in the long run. There was one time I did an upgrade or an update to mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Ubuntu Linux Mint. And then I couldn't boot into Windows. Grub was somehow messed up, but I fixed it. Now, a newbie's not going to have a clue on how how to proceed to fix that. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. the last time, Windows did a massive update, and I it couldn't broke, boot. Broke. Uh, so, But I fixed it. But true, it, it can happen. Dual booting is not the, I, the best way. It's not the best way. Is it safe? It can be safe. You know what is safe though yeah. and can be a great alternative? Mm -hmm. what? Virtualization. Just run VirtualBox yeah. or VM. Yeah, yeah VirtualBox. If, if you have enough like RAM, that. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you, you need well, RAM. I will say this wine and things like that. Hate wine. Can't stand wine, it. Wine make, now, now, to see wine to me makes no sense. 
Yeah. Because yeah. if you look, if you have to use a Windows app, use software. Windows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seriously. Use Windows. Right. If you have to use Linux, don't go Windows. If you have to use Mac, that's kind of like saying I'm going to buy a new Chevy, but let me put a Mercedes engine in there. What? Mm. Yeah. Or that's buy like, tires made for like a Ford. What? Well, no. You know, but that's strictly yeah. my opinion. Right. Yeah, wine if is ridiculous. Gonna use, if you're going to use a Windows application, like a game, for example, just play your stuff on freaking Windows, for crying out loud. Yeah. yeah. That's the way to look at it. I mean, sure. And now, might, and it now might we have, be more, yeah. we have GPU more pass through and, and uh, virtual box now to where, mm. you know, it even utilizes your graphics card. You can play games in a virtual machine now. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's feasible where it used to it wasn't. The only complaint that I have with doing that is sometimes, like on VMware or uh, VirtualBox, whatever, usually the mouse, when I'm like playing the Old Republic, for example, the Star Wars MMO thing, sometimes mm -hmm. it will just have funky, it'll lose control of the mouse for some reason. It won't emulate that properly. Mm. And I was able okay. to fix, I was able to fix that on VMware Fusion on a Mac. But for some, and it, it was, I know where the setting is on that, but I don't know where it is on VirtualBox or otherwise. I haven't used VirtualBox in a while. I, you know, it's been yeah. so easy just because because I have multiple USB sticks, so I just okay. create a bootable stick, and it's so much faster. It seems just you just do yeah. everything live on a live yeah. stick. Lately, yeah, it's just yeah. it's. I mean, just just for testing, just to get the feel of something new, and I make it clear. It's not a full test, obviously. Yeah, yeah it's so much faster. You know, it takes like what ninety seconds reboot. Go to BIOS uh, F twelve, I think on mine. Enter F something like that. Yeah. Choose the USB boot, and bam, you're right there. It's wonderful. Um, hi, coding commander. Coding, if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to. I believe coding uses uh, what do you use Ubuntu? I think, I think so. she's into programming and coding. So if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to uh, coding. Mm -hmm. She says she uses virtual box a lot. Yeah, if you got enough RAM, a beefy computer. Absolutely. Uh, virtualization nowadays, I, I think a newbie can probably figure it out how to do it. But yeah, it's, not, it's, you, not you, that, it's not that bad, really. It's a lot it's, better than it used to be. For yeah, sure. it's more It's more in the hardware. You really can't do it with two, three, or four gigs of RAM. It's just not enough, you know. But, um, yeah. A lot Coding. of devs now are even like designing their distros in virtual yeah. machines. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you right, know, yeah. it runs in right. a virtual machine. Yeah. Right. So yeah, but if you don't have a beefy machine, do we do a US, USB stick? And if you're gonna buy a, a refer or like a used machine, get a refurbished one because it usually comes with some kind of a warranty. Uh, buy a couple hundred bucks, four gigs of RAM, two two. Now, Alan Pope, who I did, I posted the interview mm -hmm. this morning live. Uh, he bought a ThinkPad. I think he paid like sixty euros. I said sixty euros, yeah. but it only had two gigs of RAM. He said, yeah, but I can install more RAM. Well, you know what you're doing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, all right, let me check uh, check the email here. But um, yeah, if you're gonna if if there are newbies out there, you want to test Linux, a spare machine, a full install is best with a spare machine. No chance mm -hmm. of messing up Windows. Of you want a dual boot, user a uh, newbie friendly distro. Um, mm -hmm. If not USB stick, the only thing you're gonna mess up is your USB stick, if that's even possible. I don't think I've ever messed up a USB stick. I have. For really? Music, too much. Okay. 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 Too much usage. All right. And then uh, also they've gone the washer a couple times, but that was pure accident, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they make waterproof USB sticks, do they? Yeah. I don't think yeah. so. No. And my mom always comes out and says, "What are these doing in the washer?" And I'm like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> they go another bird flash drive. <laughs> yeah, I've left so coins in there. Uh, <laughs> you know, Kleenex, but no. Uh, no flash drives. No, I don't usually stick. Usually, like, if I have to go to somebody's house to do some work, you see this flash drive? I put it around my neck, and I'm good to go. Yeah, it, it planning, ain't going any. I'm it ain't going. A, I'm planning to get a, a necklace at some point for my flash drive. That way, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, yeah, it's so it's not going anywhere, yeah. yeah. Uh, use the uh, neck routine. Just put it around your neck, and you're good to go. Yeah, there you go. Um, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway, um, yeah, we're waiting on a uh, coding commander to come in. Uh, yeah, Cody, if you want to join, just send me, uh, just send me an email. I'll send you the uh, the link. The link. Do I, maybe I still yeah. have your email. I don't know. Do I? Give me a second here. 
Uh, I might. Yeah, it'd be uh, nice to have a female in the podcast. Yeah, system. she's into uh, Ubuntu. It's what uh, some of us use. Sure, let yeah. me see here. I'm actually, I... after the show, maybe thinking of putting Arch on my uh, desktop alongside Windows. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like Arch. Uh, yeah, nothing yeah, the, wrong the, the only thing I've never liked about Arch is I don't like uh, some of the folks in the Arch community. <laughs> Okay, I, I won't go there, but I understand. I, under, I understand. Coding, check your email. Um, I've been lucky. I've only, I've had, I've been lucky, maybe because uh, people are scared of my Cadillac trunk. You know, it's big enough to fit six bodies. No, but. Uh, <laughs> what was I going? Oh, yeah, uh, forums. I usually, in the past, I've gone to um, Linux, L Linux Mint, Ask Ubuntu. Ubuntu Mate forums. Mm -hmm. I've asked the people on YouTube. You know, sometimes I might yeah, get an answer, and that's it. That. I have not had an issue. Yeah. But I suppose any forum has the potential yeah. to be evil. All of them, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you see nasty Windows. stuff on all of them. It's just yeah. some more than others. Yeah, and that's Arch a shame. For me is Arch for me? Their community is a bunch of weirdos. It's strange. They're very elitist uh, to the point where. You know, if you install something Arch based, but you didn't install mainline Arch, they don't want to help you. And it's some of them are t so elitist to the point where even if you st installed Arch, but you followed like somebody else's user guide or my YouTube video or, or you didn't follow the official Arch wiki when you installed it, mm -hmm. you still didn't install Arch the right way and they still won't help you. Wow. Yeah. Like, for example, if you follow Midfingers old tutorials and stuff like that, yeah, they won't even help you then. That's pretty sad. Right. Um, Zorn Chase Thomas says Zorn is the worst distro. V really horrible. Really? Oh my God! I haven't had any issues that I haven't used it in a while, but I think they're one of the more user newbie friendly distros from what I've tested. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think it was is too bad either. I thought it. Was I mean, yeah, it's they a, have it's a GNOME great desktop. Tool. I would choose Light. I like the Light Zorn Light mm -hmm. better than GNOME, but they should. And mm -hmm. Tim says the Zorn forum seems to have only one person <laughs> answering oh. questions. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Michelle. How are uh, you? Hi, coding. Can you hear How us? How are you? I don't yeah. even have any hair in today. <laughs> what? I don't even have any hair in today. I'm just like, whatever. I, I didn't do my hair either. So. I didn't either. And I must say, it looks fine by me. <laughs> well, I got my hair cut. I like the aerodynamic look, you know, when I go running. Yeah, so. I get you. <laughs> so, uh, um, what's new, coding? So I um, I actually I've been working out. I'm gonna have some Postgres tutorials come out soon on my website and on my YouTube. I um, I like screen recorded me like typing a bunch of stuff, but then like I'm gonna do like a voiceover later. Okay. And then um, I did written lessons already to go yeah. along with it. And eventually I'm going to in July. I'm doing a presentation down here where we do a battle card game using okay. um. Postgres and yeah. um, Node.js, just the back end, yeah. not the front end. And so I'm going to do lessons on that, too. Awesome. Nice. Hey, Coding, yeah. I have a question for you. Uh, I'm brand new to development, never done any of that myself. Oh, what are you working on? I'm not even freaking started yet, but my question is, I have an iPhone. I know everybody's going to laugh at me, but my question is... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know, Thomas, I know. But yeah, I've got a shameful to say a Samsung laptop running OS ten. I know, weird. And then I've got a MacBook down there on the floor. Now, I've always wanted to learn Xcode before, but there's no good freaking updated tutorials on it on YouTube. It sucks. I mean, they're all not aimed at newbie developers. It really is terrible. And I'm like, oh my god. And then I went to iTunes and other websites to try and find some good class or something on how to do it. There's nothing. So, you know, I was thinking maybe you had some advice, perhaps. I know you're not very keen on Apple, but I know maybe you could shoot some advice my way on what to do, you know, maybe. Because it's written in Objective-C is the problem. It's all yours, Coding, because I... Yeah, yeah. I Doing any tutorials on that? I'm doing because my job, yeah. I do Postgres and um, Node.js, so I don't really have time to do tutorials on anything besides stuff that I have functions. No, I got it. Well, uh, right. well, um, yeah. The problem is, is that there's, yeah. The problem is locally there isn't many uh, Apple user groups around here, 
Um, because Kentucky is not well known. I'm for not. I'm not an Apple stuff. user. I've never um yeah. really used Apple anything. Yeah, I'll just see what I can find on YouTube. Maybe. I mean, my I mentioned my friend from Austria. Uh, she uses only Apple stuff. She's happy. She's got an iPhone, tablet, iPad, and she bought a new <laughs> iMac uh, this past January. That went bad on the hard drive. Went bad. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? She um, she had she bought the Apple Care, which is which is extra. I think it's two hundred dollars per <laughs> extra per unit. But to their to Apple's fairness, she went to Pittsburgh. It's about 35 minutes from here at the Apple Store. That's minutes. not bad. It's not. They, uh, they, mm -hmm. they. I, I, I didn't go with her, but they told her. Well, they tried to reinstall mm -hmm. this, and anyway, from mm -hmm. what she described to me, it sounded like the hard drive, and it was. They sent it out that day. She got it back in two days, so the service was absolutely excellent. All they had to do was swap out the hard drive. I mean, you know, but yeah, that's uh, you know, but no, their Apple's service is good. Expensive though. <laughs> They're like yeah. designed. You pay like a premium for like the Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do. You pay for yeah, that logo. Yeah. The one sad thing about it is, is it's such a pain in the neck to get Linux on those machines. I mean, they're born to run OS X. There's no question about it. I mean, you can get it to work, but mm -hmm. if it has dual-ended graphics, like dual graphics on it, good luck. <laughs> well, I like gonna... Ubuntu personally. I think yeah. Ubuntu is better than, um, I mean, as far as user friendliness, I think it's better than Windows. Like, they always talk about Windows yeah. like it's so user friendly. I think Windows no. isn't, because there's too much crap that's, like, yeah. nonsensical. Yeah, I agree, but unfortunately, for gaming needs, like, you know, oh, me, Windows. Yeah. yeah, that's the only downside is yeah. it will yeah. not work without that. I'm know? going to guess that people who buy Apple and spend that kind of money don't want to install anything else. Yeah, they, just, they, they, they don't just... buy a MacBook to put Ubuntu on it, usually. Yeah. No, right. they don't. They're no, in a little, they like, cold. It's the Apple cold. They, like, eat apples, mm -hmm. and they have iPhones and an iPad. Yeah. And they want to hang out at Starbucks with yeah. all the cool kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the trick. You see, I'm thinking of eventually when my iPhone Forever thing comes up, I'm planning to switch away to Android because what that does, because what the iPhone Forever thing does is it allows you to upgrade to a new phone every year. And I'm thinking about just saying, screw it, mm -hmm. and ending that when it reaches its expiry date, which I forget when that is. But I'm going to switch away from this iPhone 8 Plus and get me a nice Android phone of some did sort. Did you see? Uh, I had a I, I I did a daily tech brief. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. most Android manufacturers are lying to us. To us Android users, our systems, our phones are not safe and secure. Really? Yeah, Nothing most safe and secure. <laughs> well, re, well, Nothing with the patches. Is. With that's true. But they were saying that they only there was a couple companies that have all the all the security patches. That would be Google. Of course, yeah. with their Pixel and Nexus, Samsung and Samsung, Sony, yeah. and yeah. The, the rest are behind, like multiple patches. That surprised me. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But you're right. Nothing. I'm not sure why we are, are surprised that a proprietary operating system uh, has some security problems. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right, Lamer, I'm going to send you a link. He wants yeah. to come in. We can do it, yeah. JJ, you, this will... you want to say hi? JJ? Uh, who's that? My son, he don't, he, he's like we, hi. We can say hi, hello. Jay, mm. he has a YouTube channel. Can you pause me? Oh, Jason, you don't want to tell about your YouTube channel? He is not saying one word. <laughs> You don't want to uh, say nothing. You know what happened? We said Arch and Gentle, and he said, forget about it. I'm out of here. No, just kidding. Yeah, he got scared. I'm trying to get him to let me put um, Ubuntu. Ubuntu on. He has an old laptop. It's like an mm -hmm. old laptop with Windows on it. I think it would run better if I took the Windows off and put Ubuntu. Yeah. But he's a Windows user. He's a gamer. So he's like yeah. a gaming computer <laughs> Windows, and he don't trust me. He's like, no. He don't trust his mama to put, you know. <laughs> My mom doesn't even trust me to put Linux on her machine. All she does is a Rosetta Stone and email and all that sort of thing, you know, general web browsing. So she's... Hi, Lamer. Hey, Hello, Lamer. What's up, buddy? Hello. What's up? Uh, let's see. Uh, we can hear you. Yeah, can, can you guys hear? I can Lamer. hear him just fine. Okay. All right. Chase Thomas says you jailbreak phones and tweak them so it's more custom. Okay. 
That's you cool. You can use Bluetooth mouse, uh, mouse on iPad and iPhone. Steve Winkler yeah. says your sister in law is an a Apple file. Ah, yeah. snubs anything else. Doing, tries to tell me Samsung and SA Doing looks well. like How an iPhone. You? Okay. I'm okay, man. Um, I think I've had one iPhone in my life, and it was okay, but it's it was too locked down for me. Yeah. Uh, so I sold it. I do have an iPad that I use. In fact, I don't use it that much, uh, just to say I have an Apple product. But they are reliable. It's an iPad 2 Mini that still works. I, I bought it as a refurb a few years ago. I bought it on the Apple Store with the one-year warranty, and uh, they, they are reliable. They're just not yeah. cheap. Yeah, I've never owned anything Apple, actually. I've really? Been. No, never. Yeah, there's uh, there's something to I be said for a consistent iPod. quality iPod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ironically, yeah, the last, the last iPod. <laughs> you know, I have a jailbroken first gen iPod, uh, iPhone. Excuse me. <laughs> this is the well, nowadays phone. people use it as an iPod. Yeah. Yeah. And funnily um, enough, it's on Ting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that was the only like carrier other than T-Mobile that would actually support it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Kagan says, Lubuntu is great for older hardware. Yes. Uh, Spin Viking says, I think it's the same with Microsoft and Crapple. People don't want to jump to Linux because they spend so much money on their systems. Yes. That they feel they must use it to justify all the spending. Um, but it's like Ubuntu or Linux, and then you have to get all the same stuff. It just doesn't cost anything. Uh, um, I have noticed a lot of YouTubers, like, you know, YouTubers with hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers, they only use Mac, from what yeah. I can tell. Yeah. It's for a reason. A yeah. It's the same uh, thing with we, Linux developers. I mean, a lot of the canonical guys are running MacBooks. I mean, they're... Yes, they are. It's just a style now. It's just yeah. a style. Like, people say, oh, to do video work, you need a MacBook. No. You yeah. need a computer that has certain specifications. A MacBook has it, but you can get a PC that has those specifications yes. as well for cheaper yeah. than but, a MacBook. But some of the tools that some of these people need, stuff like Adobe Photoshop, mm -hmm. it works on Mac. It doesn't work in Linux. So, yeah, unless yeah. you unless you got a virtual machine. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe crossover might work too. Yeah, yeah crossover. It can, work, it can work on Windows too, though. Is the point though? Like yeah. most yeah. of the stuff are, there is like a couple things that are like cheaper on Apple for whatever reason, as far as the video stuff than PC. Mm -hmm. But um. There's no reason why. That's like a myth and kind of like the world, the video world, like, oh, you need a MacBook Pro or whatever. No, yeah, MacBook Pro has all this, you know, it's built where it would be good for that, but any other computer type that's built for that. Um, and there are some, you probably would need like um, a virtual <clears throat> box with mm -hmm. Windows or something in it to run like um, the video editing software. Yeah. <clears throat> but... Other than that, there's no reason why you need a MacBook. Well, from what I understand, it comes down to multimedia apps. I mentioned my friend Stephanie Forey, and she's an independent singer-songwriter. Singer she, she tried Windows. Too many problems for multimedia apps specifically. She's, she's stuck with Apple because it works for her for what she does. But yeah. Apple seems to have cornered over Windows, it seemed. I never had an Apple computer. They've locked down that multimedia uh, you know, universe. You know, yeah, Windows because is... those, the, those are the people, they have like um, beards mm -hmm. and they go to Starbucks and they buy apples. They're the same people that are the graphic designers and ah. things like that. It's okay. the whole thing. Okay. That whole, it's true though, it's true. Those she stole are... my Starbucks line. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's the same plan. But they do have like, I did look at stuff and there is for like video editing and stuff. So mm -hmm. It's yeah. like cheaper to get what you want on an apple kind yeah. of. Yeah, it can be. You're right. And, uh, but actually, they still have uh, everything you need on a Windows machine. Yeah. Hey, Coding, I have a question about VirtualBox. Um, you know, I I play this Star Wars game called The Old Republic. It's an MMO game. I love it to bits. And I don't want to have to run it in emulation under Wine. So... I was wanting to run it in a VM. Now I can get it yeah. to work under VMware, but the problem is I use VMware for work, you know, throughout Toro for de Ubuntu deployment, whatever, and that's on stale right now for job reasons that I don't want to disclose. But either way, um, you know, they haven't exactly told me what they need in it, and it's proving difficult. But either way, uh, my question is with VirtualBox, you know, I can get the game to work fine under VMware on a Mac, but 
Um, that's because I know how to tweak the settings properly. But with VirtualBox, you know, the mouse, when you move it on the touchpad or the mouse or whatever, for some reason, it, 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 for some reason, it turns all sporadically. Like, the mouse focus is not perfect. What, what OS do you have running on it? Um, in the VM, well, this is in Linux for the uh, host, but on the... On the, on, on the VM, it's Windows 7. Now, I tried it in XP and then in 10 and 8, and it's the same darn thing. I don't know what the heck is wrong, but did, for did some... Do they have a version of it made for a virtual image? Because those usually work. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work proper. In a, it works... Not The game itself runs fine. It's just that one little mouse problem that's giving me the issue. Yeah, that's and, weird. You know, I use a USB mouse, no, no shebang, and the problem is the, uh, you know, I can fix it to run fine in VMware, but I'd rather use VirtualBox because it's more dependable. But you know, if I have to use VMware, so what? But I'd hate to do that because it's my work app. But if that's where I'm at, that's where I'm at. It doesn't matter. It was just something I felt to ask about. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Sometimes they do have like in. Virtual box. I've had instances where there was bugs, and there's probably a fix for it, but you gotta like you gotta fuss about with it. Yeah, yeah. Find like the right config file or something. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna use it in VMware and call it a day. Because there well, there's other there's other virtualization programs. Box. Yeah, I yeah, might just boxes. Uh... Yeah, that you could Q U E M some of that. I forgot what it was called. Q E M U yeah. I heard yeah. that's actually really good for gaming on virtualization and some of that. What that's is that? K V M? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, I'll give it a shot. Thanks for that, Lamer. <laughs> now don't ask me how to work it because it's all through the terminal. <laughs> I the think there's a GUI. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's there's GUI with uh, managers for it, I think. Yeah. That's one I like to use is called Vert Manager or yeah. something like that. Yeah, they yeah really use that. that my my old boss recommended that to me. He uh he recommended that when I worked for him. It, it was for high field and open MRI that I used to work for him at, and uh, he recommended that to me. I didn't last there very long, but uh, yeah, he uh, he suggested that for me, and uh, that was, and I, I ran it through Debian, and it was uh, it was pretty good. Have you guys uh, DT? Have you looked into the new game mode for Linux? No, I guess it's for it's it's Windows is, Windows 10 has had it for a while. I, I guess it's for optimizing lower spec machines. I've tested it; it okay. seems to work. And what distros are doing this, or is it a desktop environment? Yeah, you know what? I cut it off my ticker feed that I scroll sometimes. So I haven't looked into it yet. Okay. Uh, it's something it's something fairly new. Yeah, this game one, mode on yeah. Linux. Um, yeah. That sounds really nice, actually. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's, not, it's, yeah. I'm not a gamer, so I don't keep up with that kind of stuff. But I know the Solus guys were working really hard to uh, okay to improve gaming on Solus. But I'm I don't know what all they're they're working on yeah. for that. Yeah, it sounds um, like uh, it sounds like I'll have to check into that and see if I can install it up because this this machine I'm running will be perfect. It's only four gigs of RAM, dual core, not a high end gaming machine at all. We'll see if that works. Just out of yes. curiosity. You know, hi Sneaky. Sneaky joins us. Says blimey, Sneaky just stopped Linux. working. <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, well, we. Um, hey, hi Sneaky. Well, we, I started the show with some yeah. little bit off-topic car tech. Best wiper blades for me are Michelin. So that's what you miss, Sneaky. Then we've been talking yeah. about Linux and stuff. So we've been talking about a boatload of things on Linux. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. To me, I like a Rain X because it's cheaper at Walmart, and that's the okay. only cheap brand I know that's good. Yeah. I was gonna buy Renex, Renex, uh, Renex yeah. Latitude. I think they're called, but then I saw these Michelin. I never tried Michelin. I mean, I know they make good tires. So I put them on. I played the video earlier before. I can't hear the blades. That that's how quiet they are. So for as long as bucks, it just wipes the water off my windshield, I'm happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Yeah. No, they work for me. So Michelin, <laughs> thumbs up. I'm not, I'm not being sponsored by Michelin. Michelin. Just want to let you know. But um, yeah, Michelin works for me. So. I forget what I had on before. Yeah. Um, hey, Ben, uh, how many days did it take for you to get that Gentoo installed in? Because it, uh, it varies depending on... Well, you know, uh, given I've got 8 gigs of RAM and a 2-core, yeah, 2-thread uh, laptop behind me, this HP ProBook, 
I, it took forever. I will, right? It didn't take me forever, actually. No, it yeah. it took, and it was also on a SSH hybrid drive. Uh, you know, one of those combo drives. It only took me maybe three days. No, shorter than that. Actually, it took me. <laughs> wow. It actually, because I did my own kernel, mind you. I didn't use that gen kernel crap. I used. <laughs> it only took me about a little over an hour, maybe. That's not really. Huh. Wow. See, no see, joke, my question, man. my my question would have been, how many bottles of aspirin did it take to install? Just kidding. Because <laughs> <laughs> usually it takes forever for all that that software. Well, um, I guess because I've done gen two more times than people change their underwear, yeah. it didn't take me that long. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, you probably you probably got a good machine for it though. Yeah. Well, this is a decent laptop. It's got two hard drives. One of them's an SSD with Windows on it, mind you. But, uh, yeah, and one of them is a SSHD, which is a solid-state hybrid drive. Uh, but it did uh, it did work pretty darn well. And like actually, this, this laptop is, behind me, it, it's got an AMD A8 processor, so I'm pretty sure it would take me a week to get Gen 2 to compile. <laughs> on that Probably yeah, it, it would, would take yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got an older i3 processor and some Intel HD graphics yeah. on this laptop right here, my college one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck with Gen 2 on that, dude. Yeah, you probably <laughs> should stick with, uh, is it Linux Lite you're still running? Yep, that's, <laughs> yep. I'm on yeah, Linux right I now. I would stick with that right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I, uh, I, I re me and TJ Wolf remade uh, MCOL. But we changed the name. We're now calling it Manjaro Ultimate Edition. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll give the right, no, it's not a play on Windows. <laughs> I've tested something called Ubuntu Ultimate before. I don't think it worked. There was just so much in there. That stuff oh, yeah. didn't work. Yeah, I remember that. Well, uh, it yeah. had like a 5 gig ISO. I mean, it, it looked had... nice. I mean, it was really, it's like buying a car loaded. But it didn't quite work. You know, it was just maybe too much. Yeah. You know, it made sense back in the day where internet speeds, uh, right. you know, you didn't have right. a lot of bandwidth. You needed right. everything on a DVD. Now, yeah. Yeah. pull right. it all down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and this new M call, it's only like 2.3 gigabytes. So it's a bit on the heavy side, but not too bad. Sneaky, what's up? Uh, Sneaky says for wiper blades, he just got that new stripper tool. Uh, <laughs> this sounds inappropriate. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. What's what do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean, Sneaky. Uh, uh, Probably some UK what? thing. I know, Cody. I figured I'd make you laugh. There's yeah. so many jokes I could make about. I think he means a different kind of tool. Yeah. yeah, but, uh, yeah. This is a family <laughs> channel. It's a family show. I didn't say anything wrong. I'm just reading it all. It says a stripper yeah, tool cool. for wiper Good. blades. Uh. Yeah. Does that mean stripping the old rubber off? I don't know. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> off the blades. Shh. Oh, God. What is Sneaky, Toss turning all furby on us or something? Sneaky, can you please clarify what you mean by that particular <laughs> what item? What is Sneaky turning all Because I really don't know. I mean, I know what wiper blades hey, are. Yeah. You just got demonetized, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sneaky. Uh, Thank you. I no, no wonder why they call him sneaky. Uh, boy. Oh, let's man. Let's not get all perverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is Photoshop better than GIMP? Uh, probably. That, probably, that's yeah. yeah. yeah probably. Besides, I got parents all the way down the hall. Yeah, but probably. But you also do photo editing anyways. Do you know what I started using? Mm. What, what's it called? Let me see. Mm. What's it called? This <laughs> is the most ghetto stuff for my open shot. <laughs> Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I, use, I use GIMP for some of my logos. It works, but if I had to really get into the the, the, the deep, into, yeah, you want to go with Photoshop. Yeah, I, I like GIMP. GIMP just works. I mean, uh, yeah, see, the, no, coding, coding, see, I was right. It just strips a bit off the blade of the rubber, off the wiper blade. See, I wasn't too, I wasn't too far off. See, all right, sneaky. Thank you. VLC is better than anything paid. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for, uh, it goes to show how. Uh, if I kiss you, will you turn to a prince? Where's my oh. raccoon mascot? It's here somewhere. Where I stuck it at? Oh well. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a mascot. 
Tuck me by the pond. Uh, I would agree with Chase about VLC, though. I would never pay for a multimedia player. Oh, yeah. Absolutely yeah. not. VLC. Is, there's a, yeah, VLC this, is yeah. awesome. It's yeah. good. Yeah, I wouldn't pay. And what either. I like about yeah. their 3.0 release now is that they finally added Chromecast support. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. um, I use... See, mm -hmm. I use my Chromecast for schoolwork and stuff, you know, with my tutoring. And... Uh, you know, I'm not sure if my tutoring is going to stay going at this point because, you know, my parents and I might be looking into other alternatives, so I might not need to use Chrome as much anymore because then I can, then I don't have to worry about it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. VLC is great to watch uh, Twitch streams and uh, yeah. YouTube yeah. and everything. It's great in Windows, too. Yeah. 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 Um, I use either VLC or what's the other one? Uh, what do I use? Uh, SM Player, I think it's called, right? SM Player is yeah. another good one. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, SM Player. Yeah, yeah. it's... Mm -hmm. um, I have MPV Media Player. It doesn't always work, the MPV Media Player. Uh, but I've had no issues mm -hmm. with VLC. The, the, the default GNOME Player, I forget what mm -hmm. that's called, is pretty good, too. Totem. I think it's... Totems, is that right. what it is? Okay. Yeah, totems for known. Uh, okay. I don't remember what the one for KDE is though, but. Uh, uh it's um, what is it for KDE? I remember. I dragon player, but that's a music. Yeah, player, that's right? drag. That's, okay. That's their music app. Yeah. Well, it used to be uh, yeah. Is it dragon player? Is it? I don't know. Uh, I know that there's Amarok. Amarok was their uh, some, music player, it, but now they're music. doing Clementine. Oh, they keep or, changing it. Cantatas, yeah, it's something new every week. I like Clementine. Yeah, Clementine. Clementine is my favorite. That's the first thing I install if I want to listen to music. Yeah. First time I installed Clementine, I feel kind of embarrassed, but I was... I don't know how I did it, but I installed it to test it, and I was hearing rain. I'm like... Oh, you had the effects on? Yeah. There's a, there, there's a built-in rain uh, yeah. app. You know, like MP3, whatever, built in Clementine, right? Yeah, it, it, it provides some ambient noise. Yeah. If your room is and, too quiet and you just want something going which on. Which is sweet, but I, yeah. I guess I must have turned it on by, I'm like, where, where's that raid coming from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Clementine, it's nice and lightweight, yeah. Dead well, beef is a lot better than <laughs> Oh, jeez, Deb. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Deb. <laughs> I love that name, Dead Beef. Um, I use uh, what do I, I uh, for music? I pretty much use standard rhythm box. Works also. Clementine works good too. Yeah. Um, those are the two that I oh, use. Yeah. yeah. Um, Scratch three for your kids at school is gonna be awesome. Scratch three, sneaky. Uh, I don't know what that is either. Scratch three. I think that's a light, well, not lightweight, but easy programming for kids. Like once you program uh, stuff. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Okay. Jeez. Kagan asks, does Redcore support <laughs> LXDE? I don't know. Wow. Uh, I don't know if they do that officially. The only desktop they ship is the LXQ desktop. That's the okay. only thing that's on the ISO. The only apps they ship on the ISO, they're all queued apps. So I don't... Yeah. Okay. There's no GTK apps of any kind on the ISO by default, I don't think. Okay. Uh, What's um? I saw a video. What's up with this deep in Linux? Is it really as bad as what I've been seeing? It it doesn't appear to be to me to be honest. Uh, basically, their software center, I guess, provides some kind of analytics to some Chinese company. Uh, That's it's basically true. like Google Analytics. It, it okay. Basically, you know, a little bit about the hardware you were running. You know, maybe your screen re resolution. You know. Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of like visiting a website, basically, you know, okay. and somebody's yeah. collecting a, a little information about the user that's visiting the website. It's basically the same thing because their software center is basically a website. Chase asks, what is the, what Linux these three guys think has the best software manager? Well, I, in um, terms, I, I like. In terms of new user friendly, I would say either Mint uh, or maybe Ubuntu Mate. He, he likes Deep in OS. I like, I like the well, software like right boutique. Here. Myself, I like Synaptic. That's the more yeah, the Synaptic advanced. package manager is not bad. Yeah. But in terms yeah, of a graphical Synaptic for beginners, in... yeah, I, I like Mate. Yeah, software yeah, boutique is. Mate has the best one. Even yeah. the new Ubuntu looks kind of cool. Yeah, uh, the GNOME Software Center. Yeah, uh, not it's, good. It's not 
No, really? it's not K good. KDE's Discover it's... is not good either. To oh, no. I no, didn't no. care for this, at least the one I tested last recently, last month or something. I mean, it's okay. App Grid is not bad. I like the... the I, I, I have that installed. It's not bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. Um, let's see. There's one in... Uh, what's the lightweight one that's not bad? Is it Peppermint OS that has a nice one? DT? I haven't I run remember. Peppermint lately, and I don't usually use the GUI. Uh, yeah, I don't either usually, uh, but for yeah. I think Peppermint might have a decent one too, if not mistaken. Yeah, they got a lightweight um, Linux Mint software, like center for Peppermint. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's so it's they, all right. Yeah. It's just a fork of the uh, the Mint software. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I th I think a couple guys from Linux Mint, uh, you know, branched off to make Peppermint. Okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Barking Bandicoot says, Discover is on a run. It may soon beat the others. Okay. okay. I don't see it now, but okay. Yeah. Who, you know, who knows six months from now, right? Who knows uh, later on, yeah. Well, I always at, talk until KDE fixes the screen tearing issues and screen artifacts and all that, it won't matter about the fact yeah, that Matthew it. Moore was having yeah, that Yeah, you know, DT, I tried to test the latest Kubuntu on my ThinkPad. I, I got screen tearing off, and, and it was a full install. It was kind of yeah. weird. And KDE is the only desktop environment that has these problems. GNOME doesn't have these problems. No, it does not. No. And, no. And, the, and the KDE guys get offensive, get, or excuse me, get defensive when you tell them about these problems that, you know, yeah. you need to go fix it. You need to set your your NVIDIA settings to this and that. Well, why do I need to do that? I don't have to do that when I install GNOME or XFC. Right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I used to have a little boy, so, yeah. Uh, screen tearing, I hate that. Yeah, it's just KD. I don't know what's... I mean, it's fast. Yeah. It's great. I think KD has improved over the years by a lot. I haven't had yeah. a screen tear since 12.4 well, Ubuntu. Yeah, I had a... Yeah. Um, Sneaky has a question about what do we all think about the package installer? Snap, App Image, I guess. What's the other one? Flat. Um, I've, I, I use them all. They, they all work. I yeah, haven't had yeah. any concerns about it. They seem to be going mm. fine for me. I use uh, stamps yeah. on every distro that uh, has System D because you you can't do it on distros that don't have System D. Uh, well, unfortunately, yeah. System D is a requirement. Uh, okay. Dependency, so. Okay. Yeah, I've I've I run Caden Live off uh, a Snap or an app in it. I don't know. It's off their website. It runs actually a little, a little faster. Yeah. I always uh, install Kemp from the snaps. I uh, always install Discord from the flat pack. I mean, I, I, I use them. They work. <laughs> so. I only use Snap for um, Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That one. I, uh, yeah. My dad has a Spotify account that he shares with the family. So uh, we have uh, a student discount, so I get Hulu for free. Yeah. Nice. We get Hulu for free nice. through Sprint. So that's the reason we have that. And I want. Well, when I was talking with Alan Pope from Ubuntu, yeah. he's a Snap a Snap advisor. I guess Ubuntu's going that way. They want more and more developers to push these yeah. snaps. They want to get to a point where yeah. pretty much the Ubuntu software yeah. center is snaps, where they get away from you know, needing .deb files. And I can understand that because the, the package, I, 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 I suppose the theory is like it's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. All dependencies, yes. everything is there. And one, there's no extra dependencies to download. or you It would be this. nice. Yeah, it yeah. would be nice if we were distro agnostic on these uh, mm -hmm. package formats mm -hmm. where a snap works mm -hmm. on every single distro. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, something standard in Linux. Wow. <laughs> it will never happen. Yeah, it uh, it's a dream. It's never going to be that way because... Mm -hmm. That's nice to dream. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's, a dream. 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 it's a good dream, you know. Because it's open yeah, source. Yeah. Eventually somebody's going to say, well, I want to improve Snap. I'm going to fork it, and it's only going to work oh, on my distro. This fork. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that that's ever going to happen anytime soon. I'm sure it will eventually, but I don't think it's going to happen right now. Because it's open to you know, it seems like over the years there's Ubuntu, and then there's everybody else. Ubuntu does their thing. Well, it's usually they, uh, Ubuntu does their own thing, Red Hat does their own thing, and then right. everybody else yeah. says we're not going to do anything that Ubuntu and Red Hat's doing. <laughs> True, but I, I have to give Canonical and uh, who's the CEO of Canonical? 
Shuttleworth. Mark Shuttleworth. I have to give him credit, man. My first taste of Linux was Ubuntu in 06. It was in a magazine. I think Popular Science or Mechanics. Yeah. And say try Ubuntu. And I was a newbie then. And here, yeah. and here I am. But I have to give him and, the, and his team mm -hmm. credit for at least attempting Linux for the masses, and it yeah. it wasn't Red Hat, it wasn't whatever, it, it was Ubuntu, and they're still around. Imagine yeah, that that is not a failed experiment. The a first one I installed yeah. on physical hardware was Ubuntu as well. I think it was the uh, the one with the the bird on it. Was it a uh, eight oh four? Was that the uh, uh, that was uh, was uh, Hard my, Hardy my Heron was, or mine was Hardy Heron too. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it was Hardy Heron. Let me look it uh, up. Hold on. Yeah. Um. um Sneaky says, you guys crack me up. Okay, Sneaky, what do you mean? What do you mean we make you laugh? Do we make you laugh? Yeah. Uh, the first one was Warty Warthog, then Har Hori Hedgehog. <laughs> Some of the names, but... Yeah, uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I was yeah. Yeah, and, when I saw my first. Yeah. Um, Breezy Badger was 5.10. Then the I first remember LTS... That, yeah. yeah. The first LTS was Dapper Drake... Edgy well, left. God, I give Ubuntu in. credit for attempting, but I also, <laughs> first, number two, I give Linux Mint also credit for at least attempting it to make it more user-friendly out of the box. Exactly. And then they had Feisty Fawn. Right, then they had Feisty Fawn, then they had Gutsy Given, then they had the Hardy Heron, which was a mm -hmm. 8.04, and that was the first exposure I had to Linux. And that was through the JU Linux distro back. That was 0. Two dot five, maybe. I mean, when you look back, think how yeah. simple Ubuntu with GNOME two was back then. It was perfect. It was awesome. It was perfect. GNOME two on Ubuntu with the right. Compiz com compositing mm -hmm. was awesome, and then they wrecked it. The GNOME guys, once GNOME two was perfect, they said, "Let's kill it and create yeah. this thing that right. nobody wants." GNOME three, yeah. I, <laughs> and to I, this I, day, uh, nobody wants GNOME that GNOME three. I hate to say. Well, a hog and terrible. You guys may want to check out my interview with Alan Poe because he explained the natural transition from Unity to GNOME, and it makes sense once he explains it. Unity, you know, what's funny about Unity? It seems like everybody oh. hated it. Now that it's officially gone, oh, we love Unity. Oh, well, no, wait a minute. Did you love it or hate it? Which one is it? Well, Unity works. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Unity it works. worked with Compiz. It worked. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. GNOME three. Uh, GNOME three was a joke. I hate to say. It's gotten better with certain. I think, uh, Derek, you installed about half a dozen extensions to make it more. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, out yeah. of the box, it's horrible. And, 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 right. And Alan Pope from Ubuntu, he, he understood that. He kind of agreed. Mm -hmm. That's why I think they have a couple extensions approved installed out of the box, which makes sense. But the reason why they have, they don't have that tweak tool. Mm -hmm. Or they kind of discouraged because those are third-party apps, and he says you can just imagine having quote a standard OS and having third-party stuff possibly messing up the core system, you know. Yeah. And what he said, I mean, it made sense. It made sense. Now, could that change in the future? Would they'll have more standard? Because you know, the third-party extensions have to be written for that particular version of GNOME. Uh, is yes. The problem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what he said makes yeah. sense. I'm a little, I mean, yeah, yeah. GNOME 2, everything just worked. Yeah. And it, and, it, and it wasn't a resource hog. And that's one thing I told mm -hmm. Alan. I said, one of the reasons, if not the main reason, why I will not keep it in my Toshiba is it's mm -hmm. a little bit resource heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, with Mate, it's less than a gig at idle. With GNOME, it's, it's over a gig, yeah. And, right. and the memory leak is outrageous, too. He did he mention that, that yeah. they're working on that, or they had fixed it or something. He that, that He's aware. He's I mean, he was he was fair about it. Yeah, he knows. Uh, he knows. And he also likes Ubuntu Mate. But, you know, he explained, once he explained the natural, it just was natural to go from Unity to GNOME. And then when he explained it, it made a lot of sense. It really, you know what? Really, I, I think the better path to have chosen was Ubuntu Mate is now the flagship edition of Ubuntu. That's where they yeah, should Yeah, because it's, it's based, because uh, Mate is based, based on the old GNOME. Old GNOME 2, exactly. It, it yeah. looks, in fact, if you were to tell somebody this is Ubuntu and don't say Mate, they would say, okay, yeah, because it. it looks yeah. like it. No, he likes yeah. Ubuntu Mate. If they, if they yeah. just made Ubuntu Mate the yeah. flagship distro for Ubuntu, that would totally de-rectify the whole problems. And plus, they got their own Unity, like the Mutity. That's a great yeah. Unity replacement. Coding, what do you like? I, do you prefer Unity or GNOME 3, or does it matter? 
I don't care as long as it works. I just mostly, I'm in the text editor and the terminal. So you're just using Vim. It doesn't matter what a desktop environment. I actually started using Atom. It's kind of okay. cool because there's a, yeah, I know it's a GUI editor, but I started using Atom because they have like a package where it like keeps score mm -hmm. in the corner. And when you type, like the faster you type, the higher the score goes up. Right. Mm -hmm. I see. I see coding. You like the frog file manager. I, I, I could see. Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh, my, my son wanted me, me to show, uh, this is a video on his old YouTube channel. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, coding, coding that phone actually reminds me of the Samsung Instinct I used to have years ago. I remember that Samsung one. Phone. I remember that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was is that phone, yeah. actually? Yeah. It reminds me a heck of a lot of that phone. I don't know why. Hmm. What, what uh, phone is that anyway? Can't tell. <laughs> Sneaky says, I feel really old now. I've been using all three OSs for donkeys. Donkeys? Hmm? Sneaky? I'm not, I'm not sure I get that. That's got to be autocorrect there. That's yeah, not yeah. what you meant to. The donkey. Donkey cell phone, Jason. You want cell phone? <laughs> donkey. <laughs> no, but... Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> donkey horse. <laughs> we have a lot of donkey toys horse. here. If you guys can't um, notice it, and you, you, you should see my son's corner. My son's corner. You should see my son's corner. I'm going to show you. It's pretty messy now. He's been rearranging everything. He has. He's a collector. He's a toy collector. Uh, ah. Wow. Aren't they all? <laughs> That's the whole Five Nights at Oh yeah, he, he has all the Five Nights at Freddy's plushies. How many are you missing of the Funko Pops? Yeah. He, but I don't hey, he has three Chase Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh yeah, he doesn't have Balloon Boy yet. He has all the Five Nights at Freddy's plushies except for Balloon Boy. He has like, he goes to the stores and he gets like the boxes. Like he has a Funko Pop box, he has all these different Freddy plushie boxes. Bendy and the Egg Machine. Oh, there's Hello Neighbor. Does he mess with Linux with Ubuntu on your laptop, or does he just? No, just... he's he's all Windows. He's a gamer boy. Uh, okay. He doesn't sense. know what the heck Linux even is. It's well, then just, again, like, he's like Bobby's thing. It's so. like uncool. He's eight. He's at the age where, like, if it's Bobby's thing, it's not cool. <laughs> wow. Oh, like Sneaky it. says donkeys means a lot of years. Man, you UK Bobby's folks are weird. Years. Donkey cell phone. Okay, fair enough, Sneaky. Okay. Yeah, I didn't understand. Stripper I, tool, I didn't. donkey, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what the heck? No, donkeys, the, okay, so that's a UK thing, Sneaky. It means a lot of years. And the UK people just joking. Sneaky, just joking. Yeah. So that's weird because if you ask someone their age, mm -hmm. um, 14 donkeys of years or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 14 donkey years? What? Yeah, 14, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That As sounds a, really odd. As in donkey, donkey years. years. Yeah. Okay. Donkey, donkey means a lot of years. That's what Sneaky says. I didn't a know A lot that. of years? A lot of years. So you could say, know. how old are you? I'm, I'm, tw I'm 49 donkeys or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I'm only 36. No donkeys here. Okay. Nah. All right. But I, I, got, I know what you meant, Sneaky. Okay. So you've been oh, using your OSs a lot. I'm 26 huh? turning 27. I'm a mongoose. <laughs> oh, God. I've got you all beat. Well, not toss. Sorry, toss. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, 20, I'm I'm 25 plus tax. Lots of tax. <laughs> 25 plus tax. Okay. And I just turned 57 last month, so. For real? Uh, you. Yeah, and I feel great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't look a day over 40. Uh, yeah, you don't look no, 57. I, you know, it's uh. amazing. It's a lots of sparkling water. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were old, man. <laughs> hey, my dad's 61. Beat that. <laughs> my dad's in the 70s. What the? Stuff, Fred. All right, where's the dog? There are days I feel like I'm 70. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, especially with this weather here now, see, now it's going to snow again out right Tuesday. Now. Yeah, we got rain here. It's like, you know, we got like two days yeah. of spring. Now Tuesday yeah. it's going to rain with rain. snow. I'm like, come on, Mother Nature. The weather here in Kentucky is so unpredictable. It sucks. Yeah. Weather well, in Florida is pretty predictable. It's very predictable here. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's true. Well, no, I was in Orlando. I was in Winter Park, Cody, for almost 10 years. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know. 
I know the weather down there. It's um, it's nice right now. It's boring uh, right now, but that's when you know it's. I think the rainy season just starting a little bit early. Yeah. That's not time. It's April. It's time for it to start raining. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, it's time for the monsoon yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah you know. Yeah. Pretty yeah. soon, they're gonna start trying to scare us with a bunch of hurricanes. You know, here, but mm -hmm. the thing is, like, okay, they always want to be like, oh, it's heading right towards Florida. Like, they all have, mm -hmm. are, are as they turn, you know, at some point in its path, yeah. it's gonna be headed towards Florida, you know? So yeah, of course. Hey. So, you have friends that use Linux coding, or is it just like you and. I bet um, I've seen guys who use Linux. Oh really? Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, my uh, my like um my girlfriend they don't really use Linux. Uh, I show Linux to yeah. a friend of mine and his son, but his son's into gaming, so Linux, forget about it. Yeah. Linux didn't work out for him. Uh, I, I don't like telling it. other people about Linux because I don't want to be their support channel. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Well, it's not, if you use something like Ubuntu yeah. or something, it's really not that yeah. 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 like yeah. yeah. all letter in. No, well, no, the door's open. I just mm -hmm. don't want you to freak out if somebody's walking through here in the middle of the night. So that would yeah, be okay. Okay. All right, then. You doing Thanks. all right? I'm fine. I'm in a podcast. This is the new serial show. This is us with Linux. Remember that TV show? This is <laughs> <Sorry>. us. <laughs> hey, no this problem. Is this is unscripted. This is unscripted. That's why we do these live, man. It's unscripted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Even the ones I don't do live usually end up like this. I don't think I've ever okay, edited man. a live feed ever. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think I took down That was one. my mom telling me my sister's coming. Hi, mom. Sorry. Uh, you yeah. just walked out the door, you missed her. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, I don't edit either. I don't cut things out. I mean, even mistakes I make. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. if something terrible happens, it's all in the video. <laughs> well, <just> unless <laughs> for some reason the internet or the feed's so bad that you have to kind of start over. Mm -hmm. But that one where your thing uh, froze, that was funny. The one yeah. with the unstable. Yeah. Yeah. Next, that one was that one was okay. Don't put yeah. the big thing yeah. in my portal. It's going to knock down stuff. No, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chase says Hurricane Linus. Ah, Linus Torre. Yeah, I imagine if they. Made I remember. Her. I remember that one day, uh, where he, uh, where he flipped off in video. That was funny. <laughs> there was a comedian years ago. He says, "Where did they get these names for these hurricanes? People in Florida don't take it seriously. Like they say, Hurricane Irene's coming. Oh, Irene's coming. It's like Monday. Or Hurricane <laughs> Jane. Oh, Jane's coming again. They should, <laughs> they should rename the hurricane Hurricane Rip Your ASS. Oh my God, Rip My ASS is coming. <laughs> you know, Rip Your whatever. Oh my God. It's, no, they're it's, trying to scare us too much down here. It's a problem. Cause it's annoying as hell because." They, they they get people all scared. It's annoying everywhere. <laughs> and then well, like they they, it, they it, gas. It. Okay, there'll be no gas, but there's no real gas shortage because no hurricane actually comes. But, but three days they before do. the hurricane landfall, they, they scare everybody. So but there's a do. run on food. There's a run on yeah. gas. There's a run on everything, and everybody gets yeah. into this big panic. And so all these inconveniences we face. For no yeah. reason, it's no real gas shortage. The way's not well, blocked by yeah, trees. Yeah. Yeah, well. There's no food shortage. There's gonna be more food tomorrow. There's gonna be more gas tomorrow. But you still gotta deal with all these lines and go to the store, and there ain't. See, that's but the thing. The next hurricane, Hurricane Coding Commander. Oh my God, we better no. get out of those. This is what you do if you live in South Florida. You keep some bottled water and some cans yes. in your house at Common all times. Common sense. Time. Common sense. Yeah. And if a hurricane comes. Then you got, and you don't know three days in advance, it don't matter. It's re just ridiculous. What I do is I wait and I'll set my alarm and get up at four o'clock in the morning and get gas because there's no real gas shortage before right. something is right. hit. Yeah. You yeah. just got to yeah. get there while everybody else is sleeping. Yeah, it's you, like you better keep was... a week's worth of uh, water, not three days, because I remember yeah. Katrina, it took them like eight, nine days to get water. To well, people. that that was <laughs> extreme, have... though. Yeah, that, that was, was extreme. Yeah. Probably not yeah. going to happen. Like, basically. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're in an evacuation zone, you evacuate. I live in an evacuation zone because I'm right yeah. off the beach. Okay. So we'll go to his dad's. Who his dad lives on the mainland, you know. Yeah. Um. So we'll go to his dad's and just keep bottled water and canned food. And then if it comes, you got something to eat. And usually it doesn't come. You or if it does come, it's no big deal. You know, there's not usually like devastation. It's not like every year in Florida's devastation. People think that because they hype the shit up so much. 
I wonder if the emergency services use Linux at all. Just just out of curiosity. The one thing I, I always tell know. people. Yeah. I don't get any emergency service because yeah. I live in a mandatory evacuation zone. Okay. okay. Do not depend yeah. on the government for anything. Make sure that you they can take care of it. You get stuck here. If there's a hurricane, yeah. I stayed yeah. when I was in mm. college. Wilma came, and that was mm. the worst fucking hurricane for me. Excuse my language. It was. <laughs> it was Thanks, awful. coding. <laughs> fine. I remember Wilma too. That actually did, it hit Florida, and then I think it mm -hmm. hit Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of South Florida yeah. was out of electricity, yeah. and yeah. I live on the beach, right? So mandatory evacuation zone. They close yeah. the bridge and they keep it up because you know all the rich people they're not there this time right. of year. You know, with their yeah. empty rich people condos, they don't want the shit getting looted. Right. So they keep you trapped there. And there is like big like food shortage. I mean, I had canned food and stuff on me. Yeah. I didn't starve, but it was um, it pretty much sucked because like you know no electricity and you're trapped there. But it's mandatory evacuation zone. So they told you to get out. That year was a particularly bad year though because we had Katrina, Rita, and Wilma all in. Oh, that was, that, that was crazy, yeah. Katrina yeah. hit here, but it didn't do anything really. It was only a level um, one. And the houses here, and not all the structures are built. Where if like a level one comes, it's not doing any structural damage. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's it's not so much to win to see projectiles that people got to watch out for. Yeah. You uh, just don't don't be in a trailer. Stay in the house. Stay out of a <laughs> free evacuation zone. And you'll yeah, don't stay in a double wide trailer during a hurricane. Yeah, yeah, that exactly. thing, that's yeah. die. People yeah. die either outside or in a it's trailer. It's a sale. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm looking at the chat. Lemler three says they use Debian in the army for GPS systems. Interesting. Really? Okay. Debian. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, Chase says NASA uh, uses Linux. I believe the International Space Station uses Linux. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Cool. Um, and the top 500 supercomputers in the world all run Linux. Yes, yeah. Linux all is everywhere. Even Linux, like, Linux is a ward. Like the operating system, like anybody big uses. Like all the big mm. shit doesn't happen on like Windows. No, yeah, just, nobody's yeah. running Windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Linux or like oh Linux my god type operating systems. ATMs use Linux, Spin Viking. I guess they do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. I don't use, I love this. I never. Uh, I think I. I don't think I've ever used it. I. I don't trust ATMs yeah. in general. Dude, this is uh, nuts. Two hundred and sixty packages for KD four. Holy crap! Wow. Yeah. And then you're putting this on Gen two. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay. That's gonna take all freaking night. Speaking of a hurricane disaster, no, just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> I'm going to DC next week. Oh yeah, what's DC, up? Huh? An FCC convention. Federal community. Oh, cool, cool. I work for a telecom company, so they're sending right. me DC. The DC. Okay, nice. I'll be heading to Canada on June. Oh, my birthday's in June. Happy Mine's birthday. July sixteenth. Will be. I'm June six. I'm a devil child. Six six. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, and my birthday's at the end of the year, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I will go DC, and I get after the convention, like the um, project managers gonna like have like sales meetings and stuff. Ooh. But I don't do sales, so like I'll, I'm still gonna be there. So I get like a whole day, nice off in DC to do whatever I want. Okay, nice. Kagan I'm says in New York. I don't know. Yeah. Kagan says DC Distro Commander. That works too. Yeah. Oh, Distro Commander. I'm a yep. coding commander though. Hey, Fat Elvis has an emerge command for you there, Ben, in the chat. Emerge dash ass don't. Don't. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah. God. He's, he's persistent. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is about 102,597 102, kilobytes of source code. So about 102 megs of source. Oh, my. Wikipedia novel, Google uses Linux as well as the Russian, the Russian schools, dark comedy, they use Linux. But, the, but there's a Russian distro, right? Which one is yeah. that? Rosa. R-O-S-A, Rosa. R -O -S -A, Rosa, that's a nice name. The distro sounds pretty, like Rosa. Yeah. It, run, it runs KDE, though, so. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it runs KDE. Um, funnily enough, I say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> it yeah. runs KDE. Well, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, KD isn't so bad. It's just very, very. It's gone bad. faster. It's, it's gone faster over the years. It's lost to customize. 
That's what people uh, get I mean, It's a lot off. in there. I mean, um, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, like I switch people... between XFCE and KDE most times. I think I, I have an eating disorder. I like eat all the time. I, yeah, I, I have really big hormones and I eat a lot. It, and I also have a fast metabolism. That's my excuse. Yeah, I like eating. I'm pretty good at it, though. So. I can't stop eating. It's like I eat all the time. Like I saw him finish my dinner. It's more in the winter time when you get stuck in the house because the weather's bad and you mm -hmm. watch TV. And stick on my winter stomach. It's not good. It's not good. Of course, obviously, in the summertime here, I'm out swimming, tennis, jogging. I'm out. I'm, I'm more active. So I don't think of food. But it's true. My mom said, you know, when you stay in the house, you think of, I'm going to watch TV. I'm going to some chips. I try to eat more fruits. You know, veggie sticks versus chips or cookies. Ice cream. Or ice cream. I, I love Klondike's. That's my weakness. That and what Hershey's would you do almonds. For bar? Yeah, really. I like the the crunch. The the Klondike uh, is it Nestle the crunch one, and the Reese's. Oh, dip it in whipped cream. Oh, I like the Snickers ice cream bars. Those are good. Okay, those are good too. But see, that's the problem. You know, because it's winter time or whatever, you can't go out to play. You're stuck inside. And you think it's, oh, I live in Florida. We it's eat like ice cream in the, all year round. well, well, with the heat, right? But I guess it's the activity you know, the ice cream thing. Ice parlors are in my neighborhood. I live on the beach. There's like four ice cream parlors, oh, like right nice. here. Yeah, perfect. But uh, no, we have a we have a yogurt place within walking distance. This is nice. We have a new Dairy Queen. There's a Tim Hortons. They got that Cold Stone ice cream is pretty good. Um, so we have choices here. But yeah, in the summertime, I don't necessarily think of ice cream that much in the summertime either. It's just you know when you're more active, I'm 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 thinking about other activities versus the, versus the the activity of eating. You know. When I was younger, uh, before I had my kid. Uh, I was really small. I like wore double zero, and people used to always ask me if I have a tapeworm. Like seriously, people were like, "You need to go to the doctor. I think you have a tapeworm." I'm like, "I don't have a tapeworm," and <laughs> people would seriously think I had a tapeworm. Not even joking around. Hmm. But I showed them, right? I gain weight now. You know what's <laughs> funny? When I go shopping, I'll turn over the thing and look at the ingredients. I'm like, "What is that? What? I don't know what that is." You know, and if it's not, one guy said, "If it doesn't come out of the earth, don't eat it." That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I usually just eat wherever it sounds good. And my good. darn, and right in the middle of the compile, the freaking darn laptop shuts off. <laughs> wow. Were you compiling the kernel? No, I was doing. KDE oh, you were doing KDE. That's right. Yeah. yeah was it plugged 4. in or on the battery? It was on its battery. That's uh, the problem. Jeez, how many warnings do, do you need? It's better to leave it plugged <laughs> in, right? Right, and it's two hundred sixty packages. So yeah, I plugged it in. Hmm. Two hundred and sixty items. Just for kidding. <laughs> that's pretty sad. Spin Viking says Shark Linux developed by French Canadian living in Texas. Boy, that's a lot. French Canada and Texas. Mm -hmm. That's a heck of an accent. Uh, I can't pull that off, though. Yeah. Uh, I gotta take these headphones out. They're they're killing my stretch. Okay. Oh, god. Blast it. They were starting to kill my ears too. Barking Bandicoot says ketogenic diet. I don't know what that is. Keto. Yeah, I'm, keto I'm not sure what that's about either. Yeah. No crashes and spikes from sugar rushes. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, I, I hate if it works. Hey, if it works, it works. Right. Yeah. That's the way I look at things. Um, anyway, next one I'm looking forward. Maybe I can have a little chat with Martin Wimpress from Ubuntu Mate. Uh, I spoke with him a couple years ago, and uh, he told me why he created Ubuntu Mate. I guess he, I guess he did it for his wife. Hmm. That's why sometimes I call it the romantic OS. His wife missed the old Gnome 2 uh, look or wanted something simple, and... I think that's how it came about. I think that's part of the reason, anyway. So, yeah. So, and it's 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 uh, me and Alan Pope talked about it, but in in Ubuntu Mate, the panel tweak, the Mate panel tweak, uh, you got what six or seven choices for the, for the environments. I thought that was genius, and Alan Pope agreed. You can make it look in one of six or you seven. You can make it look however ways. the heck you want. Yeah. yeah, and it and it works just like that. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's what I like about Mate is that you can make it look how you want. Right. It's not that hard to do at all. No, it's just a couple clicks. Choose what you want, and that's it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I love it about I love that about you know the gnome style interface with Mate because it looks it's easy. New Year's can adapt to it easy. And it's it's just like I said, it's easy. You know, there's not a lot of flash in Ubuntu Mate. It's not built for that. But there's something to be said for just simplicity stable. Simply yeah. stable. You yeah. know, just something and then, and then customize it later. Yeah. You know, no extensions, no, you know, tweaking. It just, it's there and it works. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, that's why I like things like LXD. I mean, there's no flash to it at all. There's nothing sexy about it. But you know what? It just works. One of the best uh, light distros is LXLE. Yeah, uh, that's kind of like the unknown distro, but they've they've packed it in, but it's still fast. They, they did a terrific job. Yeah. Yeah, LXLE is pretty good. Yeah. I had on um, a Acer, it had one gigabyte of RAM in it, and it ran smooth. Yeah, it's made for all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And think uh, about all the uh, desktop environments we've tried over the years, thanks to GNOME. If yeah. GNOME wouldn't have killed GNOME 2 and went with GNOME 3, yeah. most of us would still be running GNOME or KDE, but you know, we've mm. purposely now yeah. been distro hopping, desktop environment hopping because of all that. Yeah. We got Unity, Cinnamon, Pantheon, yeah. we got Budgie, we got all of these Mate, all of that because of GNOME 3. You know, I don't distro hop as much as I used to. Like I said, I've been there, done that, but when I did distro hop, I always can't came to the same conclusion after so many years. I want something that just works, that's stable. Speed and looks suck if it ain't stable, right? So number one, it has to be stable. It's kind of like building a house. If you're building it on quicksand or on a sinkhole, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how fancy your house uh, is. I like fast and unstable. Give me as fast uh, yeah, as I, unstable. Uh, okay, as well, okay. <laughs> well, it's it's you Southerners, man. No, I'm just kidding. But. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, like I was uh, telling the Biddle guys last night. Linux should hurt a little bit. Well, I, I, um, <laughs> poor Cody. <laughs> uh, shut up. I'll say a word, Cody. But uh, been there, done that for the hurting and the unstable part. Not anymore. Yeah, I've, I've paid my dues as a Windows user going the unstable route after so many. God, I had a stack of, like I said, of bootable discs. I finally pitched them. You know, I, sh I should have recycled them. Oh well, I, I kind of feel bad now, but, um, but yeah, I've been there, done that, man. And, not, and then not, you spend, you know, six months like Ben's about to do, getting this perfect Gen 2 install, and you get everything configured exactly the way you want it. Then you get that kernel panic. Then you gotta spend the next six months reinstalling to get it back to where. You I know. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I ain't got time for all that. I just use a bunch of desktop. Yeah, you don't do any kind of a tweaking of it. You just run it as is, or I mean, like not really. I mean, I change like the aesthetics of things to look like how I want them to look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only tweaking I do is is specific apps that we need. You know, a DT for YouTubers. You know, you, you but you don't play around with the themes and oh. icons and fonts and all that. Oh, I do. Once... I oh, change the fonts and the I don't, colors yeah. and everything. Yeah. Change the fonts and icons and wallpaper and that's it. Maybe add like a conky, but that's just if I'm feeling a conky. Conkeys is nice. I don't use it, but it's nice. I use it sometimes. It just depends how the wallpaper look. MX like seventeen has a nice conky changer, conky manager. MX seventeen, mm -hmm. it's really nice. You mm -hmm. user friendly. Oh, I love uh, MX conky. Spin Viking says fried fox. You mean Firefox or fried fox? <laughs> it's awfully. Speaking of food, it. it's awfully slow these days. I, I find if you disable cookies, you're tracking. You'll slow it down even more. Oh. I like uh, cookies. I'm not sure if I'd like fried fox though. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I got cookies when I went grocery shopping today. I keep thinking to myself, why did I buy any cookies? Oh, cinnamon rolls sound good right about now too. Oh man. Oh, cinnamon balls, oh. cinnamon rolls. Well, that does I'll sound go. Good. I'll go to. Uh, I go to a discount grocery store. I get like a, a cheesecake sampler, good size for like nine dollars. Oh man! Well, I don't go to discount grocery stores. I don't trust discount grocery stores. Well, I haven't gotten sick yet. <laughs> uh, I go to Publix. I go to the premium grocery. Publix. Store. I remember there used to be Albertsons down there. Still down there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think they're still around. They're not like around, yeah. around. Okay. I think there might okay. be yeah, a couple yeah. of them, but they're not remember. like. Yeah, here it's mainly here it's mainly Kroger, of course Walmart, Supercenter. 
They had Kroger uh, when I lived in Toledo. Okay. Yeah, I usually go to the DG. That's the local one for where oh, I live. Oh, yeah, Kroger, too. Kroger sells spoiled food, though. That's what I don't oh. like Kroger. Oh. Yeah, don't buy any marked yeah, down meat. Yeah. If that no, steak yeah, you, has well, a green yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. don't buy it. Yeah, yeah. I um I cracked the joke because Kroger that I want is here is remodeling. They got it, you know. So I cracked the joke with Tom and switched to Linux. I had to use my GPS on my phone to find the bread, you know. Ow. And he says, no, don't laugh because some stores actually have that app where you can find stuff and tell you where to go. I said, well, that's scary, Jeez. you know. But... You guys I think it's thinking. morally wrong to be like, oh, we can sell poor people spoiled food and still, instead of like um, throwing it yeah, away. I don't, I don't buy the meat I'll stay away from. You know, sometimes Walmart in the oh, back will funny. have last day, you know, but. Actually, uh, Amazon got their own grocery store that you can just walk in there. Yeah. And you just download the Amazon app. Mm. You just grab what you want. You walk out and it just takes money off your Amazon account. Right. right. They use some type of cameras to Crack see Amazon. what you're buying. They're trying to put everybody out of business. Toys mm -hmm. R Us, isn't that enough? We want to put the grocery <laughs> stores out of business too? <laughs> Yeah, what is Amazon? What is Amazon going to do with our information too? You know, you got to worry about that right, as they become bigger and bigger. You know, it's another. So yeah. Amazon can steal all our information. Just Sounds like Google, already. just like Facebook, it's going to be the same thing. They're going to get hacked at some point, and it'll be the next Yahoo. Yeah, it, it is a brave new unsecured. Oh, world. Look, here's a Toys R Us exclusive. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Toys R Us. My son has been teasing me saying Toys R Us sucks because his favorite toy stores are Hot Topic and um, GameStop. So he's like, he's to take... like, I don't care. Their toys were stupid anyway. Hot Topic. To take... So your son is going to grow up to be a Mac user? Oh. oh. No, Hot Topic. No, it's video games. Windows. Ah. Oh, okay. Hot Topic okay. sells video game toys. Hmm. Yeah. Does yeah, he do console gaming or do you... Uh... He has a PC, he has a PlayStation, he has a Nintendo Switch, he has a Nintendo Wii, he has a DS, he has... what else does he have? I don't know. He's got... A, I haven't heard he's of the yes. child. <laughs> he's an only child? Oh my god. <laughs> he's my that's only a... son. My sister has one son who's about to graduate high school this year, and that's the only two grandchildren my parents have. Um, he's his dad's only son. Like, it's, you know, there's a lot of love for him. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you, you he see. He goes with my dad. He's like, I want to go with Grandpa. Grandpa's crazy. Today he came back from Grandpa's house. He was like, guess how much money Grandpa spent on me? $106. <laughs> wow. He, he knows math. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're they learning counting money in school now. He loves that. Nice. He's like, he practices. Oh, I always love that. At the conference, he's doing really good with the money count. <laughs> he's a little Jewish boy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to take my son a lot of Toys R Us in Pittsburgh. Of course, now they're shutting down. Yeah. But those he used are good to love times. Toys R Us too. Now he's all gamer boy. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, the thing he would go to Toys R Us for the Toys R Us exclusives. But Hot Topic, Hot Topic, and GameStop do carry more of the toys he likes than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I, yeah, I wonder how stores toys. like GameStop are doing these days uh, with oh, Steam no. becoming so popular. Yeah. I wonder if people still buy, you know, like actual games, you know, they that do. are not digital. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's okay. like a game, people want the disc. If it's like, if they're like a fan. Mm hmm. I like the physical. I don't I haven't bought a game in over a year, but I like the physical disc. Kind of like to have the physical right. part. You want of the it. box, the manual. Yeah, yeah. kind of like collector. Yeah, like the Halo games. I would. I, I would want all the physical. You know. Yeah. The posters. Right, the thing, and... Like you like Halo, so you'd want all them. That's what's like. Like mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, if it's just some game, like oh whatever, I'll get that download on Steam. But if it's like where you have the series, you want like the box and like the liner note type stuff for everything the, the first the first halo game i played on my pc it was 2005 ish one of my friends said oh yeah try halo you and your you and your boy will like it. i'm like okay so i installed it and this was like a single core this was not a gaming machine by any means but but i got it to install and i'm playing it <laughs> i had to turn down the resolution because you know, you know, when you play a shooter game, you know, there's a machine, you know, and then you got these aliens coming at you like this, you know. You're not scared. 
Well, it ran. Sl- let's just say it ran slow. You know, in the Halo game, when you had the enemies coming after you, because of my computer was slow they came after me like ballet oh <laughs> you're slow and you know instead of <laughs> boom boom it was like ballet you know i was like really but once i you know tuned it turned it down a notch i got it to work at a respectable speed yeah. but it was so ridiculous i'll never forget it there's nothing worse than playing a first person shooter especially yeah. multiplayer yeah. with a uh, bad frames per second because right, you're, right. you're gonna get killed yeah. you're just gonna yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's I'll never forget that. And of course, in 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 the Halo game, there's a, there's a like a zombie creature that they call the flood, like a flood of yeah. evil, you know. Mm-hmm. And they look like running blobs of crap, and they came after me like ballet. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Man. With me. Oh, there we go. Speaking of food, yeah. <laughs> but no, I went to Walmart one time, and this game right here, the Command Congress series, I always love playing it. Uh-huh. Well, I thought, hey, there might be a DVD game disc in here, but come figure out it's a digital download and it comes with a uh, CD for yeah, the yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Well, the digital copy is on Origin, which doesn't support Linux. So I had to either run Windows to play it or trying to get working on a wine. Hmm. Okay. Which I did get Origin working one time, but I just didn't want to play the game. I guess that's why another reason why people love Steam. You know, that way you don't yeah. have to worry about stuff like that. Man. Um, Kagan says one thing I hate about multiplayer Halo was everyone wanted to be a sniper. I did not. I I I like there was something gratifying to you wanted to people. be John Rambo. I wanted to run people <laughs> over. I wanted I to be motivated. the uh, yeah. the road rage guy. So when we played multiplayer online. You know, my son, his friends come over online with his friends. I'll be the driver in the Jeep and the Warthog. Or the, you guys could shoot. Yeah, Dad. So I'm running. I was on a tear where they're running people over left and right. These That's bodies are aliens. You're flying all over the place, you know. And, I do uh, sending on Battlefield that yeah. Battlefield game. You know, it's funny that you're playing a high-tech, sci-fi, futuristic game. But there's still something gratifyingly low tech satisfying about just running the evil things over with the Jeep. You know, it's boom, 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 boom. You know, and just hearing them go, wow, ooh, oop, ooh, you know, yeah. and all that. It was ridiculous and funny at the same time. But uh, then those, you could turn on the extra dialogue, you know, and the little grunts would say, I'm a lean, mean fighting machine or something like that, you know. And, and then you kill them, wah, you know, but. Uh, Oh, those were those were the fun, fun Halo days, and the soundtrack of the games—they're fantastic. I give credit to all the composers; it's amazing. They make it sound like a grandiose movie, you know. Um, they should have made a Halo movie years ago. I think Microsoft botched it. Uh, yeah, I think they have, but it wasn't that great. I think I yeah. seen one. Halo it was a movie. web movie. It was okay. They, it yeah. was a low budget, fairly low budget, ten mil. I mean, you, you need like a hundred mil for. A, Proper Halo game, a Halo yeah. movie, but they did want to. They they did it in Canada, Forward Until Dawn. It was ninety minutes. I think they spent ten. They built an actual Warthog, and they had a guy playing the Master Chief with the arm. It looked slick, for a low budget. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't a Hollywood feel to it. Like the trailer was great. That was that's what me to rent the movie and watch it. But when I watched the movie, I just fell asleep. Well, the first sixty minutes is slow in that movie, yeah. but then it, it it starts to kick in. If you saw it towards the last twenty five minutes or so, it really looks like you feel it threatening, you know, with the aliens coming in, and the and and the CGI effects with the um, with the energy sword, the uh, not the grunt, the the big dude. Um, oh, I can't think of his name now. The elite. That's that's who he is. The alien elite with with that big energy sword. Uh, it, that was impressive for a low budget web f- web movie, but I guess that project died because Microsoft wanted like half the profits, and the studio said no, 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 no. But anyway, That's and the guy here. who wrote the script was the guy who wrote the movie District Nine, sci-fi movie. Uh, one of my favorites, yeah. Neil Blomkamp. Yeah, yeah he's done a, f- a few good ones, a few bad ones too, but he was he he got I think either him or somebody else got paid like a million dollars to write the script kind of like a retainer or something but but i don't know microsoft wake up you mm-hmm. know uh yeah. there are fans like me still who want to see a proper halo movie just pick the pick the original book called the fall of reach just follow that book to make the movie and there's a heck of a movie there 
But well, guys, yeah. I'm gonna have to leave you for this evening. I got somewhere I've got to be. So yeah, I'm gonna jump off here soon. Be yeah. With us. Mm hmm. <laughs> you have somewhere better to be. Not not particularly no, but I, I do have to go take care of something. So. Cool, man. All right, we'll catch you next time, DT. All right. yep. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, good yeah. Good evening. Yeah. I have, uh, so, I've um, got some, uh, I got a friend getting on with me here soon that I'm going to game. That's cool, man. Yeah, I'm going to jump off here in a few minutes, too. Cool, cool. All right, we'll see you. Later. So it looks like we have some few Halo fans in the chat. Uh, Charlie says, anyone remember when Halo was meant to be only three games? Yeah, sure I do, yeah. But they expanded it. Kagan loves the Halo the Halo storyline behind the behind it behind the Halo universe. You like to read the books? I have a, I have a few books. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, My it all started. Five Nights at Freddy's books. Freddy's books. Five Nights at Freddy's. He reads the books like the. Ah. Uh, okay. 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 What's that? No, I don't read as much as I used. You are not about to go live on YouTube, no, yeah. like YouTube. No, that's a video. Oh, you're uploading it? Yeah. It, Let me see what you're uploading. Okay, you can upload. It. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta right. be careful. Like what? You usually like I'm with him when he makes his YouTube videos. A description. What? What do you want the title to be? Wait. Make a title. What do you want the title to be? I'm coming back. Um, because it's for cool to Jason. No, I mean Final Freddy Boy. Okay, description. My comeback? Mm -hmm. Pass it? Yeah. <laughs> my son just uploaded a YouTube video. Yay. <laughs> I don't think my son has ever done a YouTube video. He's not into that. He watches YouTube, but he doesn't do anything. Are going to do a new plush episode? No, that's him. I'm going to get back into making videos. I can do it with you. I've just been behind. Yeah, it's, it's, it's time consuming. All right, let's make this the last call for... Um, sorry, let's make this the last call for comments, and we'll wrap this up for in about alcohol. five minutes. <laughs> last drink of the night. The last call for comments. <laughs> <laughs> You want to drink when when we sign off? You're on your own. This is the last call for uh, comments in the chat routine. room. I yeah, I gotta I gotta get up early tomorrow. I gotta do. I got one yeah, more I piece of tax. I gotta do. boy. So. Uh, come back. Anyway, um, yeah, we started off talking about wiper blades. I like Michelin, so check out the Michigan wiper blades. I done yeah, I'll give him a try when it hits the yeah. next wiper blades replacement. That's a I love my body. Yeah, some of those wiper blades are like 20 bucks each or more, like the silicone, I won't bend. you know, uh, rubber, I'm whatever. Those are expensive, but I guess... Uh, I have tried the Rain-X uh, water repellent spray. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I heard those are good, yeah. Yeah. One thing bad about it, it kind of smears. Oh. If it dries up, then it smears your windshield, but okay. you have to buff it out. Is that what it is? It. Yeah. yeah, I thought about buying the Rain-X Latitude, but then I thought I've never tried Michelin Blaze. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. They're awesome. There's there's no yeah, like Rain-X on it. Yeah, I guess it's the quality of the rubber that makes all the difference. <laughs> it's the quality clean, of the rubber that makes clean clean windshield. The rubber blades. Like I said, as long as it just pushes the rain off my windshield. Right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. You need good quality rubber to just. Push yeah, yeah, the rain uh, off. duh. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Brown, oh, stop it, Cohen, it's a family show. Uh, Charlie says, <laughs> Charlie says, anyone watch a Lost in Space reboot? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I, I like the Star Trek reboot, reboot better. Uh, Charlie, just to let you know, um, it looks good. They spent some money on the Lost in Space reboot, but, uh, I don't know. I just didn't, I, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel for the characters personally but it looks great so there's your answer i don't know if, if you guys are into lost in space or stuff like that but uh not much of a uh, sci-fi movie type of guy if it's More a good a story action. i don't I mind like yeah me too. i like sci-fi really in fact any movie that has a good story that yeah that makes me feel for the characters um i don't mind uh, like sci-fi for me if someone recommended it, i'll i'll watch it yeah the last uh, Blade Runner movie I thought was okay. I kind of felt for the character. I had a and... bad experience with the first bad, the first Blade Runner movie. Wow. It was um, New Year's Eve, 
um, 2000, mm -hmm. and I was with my friends, and I took some acid, and then we oh, were watching no. Blade Runner, and I have no idea what it was about, but um, it, it really freaked me out. I wound up standing up, and I was like, what the f going on here? And I went like crazy. I thought like, I don't know mm. what I thought. It was very, it was a bad trip, and I didn't do LSD after that. <laughs> that not was... good, Cody, not good, not good. But I, I'd never yeah. watched Blade Runner either because I was so scared that night. I've just been like, yeah. Well, Blade Runner has a lot of YouTube. has a lot of visuals to YouTube. it. Yeah, the flaw. Uh, Charlie, you like? There's a new Mech Warrior game coming. Cool. I used to play Mech Warrior. Yeah. Counterpart. I mean, okay. I, mean, <laughs> I played this game on the Soul Keeper VR. I'm actually in the credits of the game. Um, it's really cool. It's kind of like it's a Virtual reality role play game, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but like a single player role play game. And like uh, with the VR goggles, so there's like zombies coming after you and stuff and all kinds of things. Berserker, you gotta like fun. It's re it was really scary with the zombies because it's like they're all around you. You know, you got yeah. the headset mm -hmm. on and sure. you're in this like medieval hellish type of yeah. setting. Yeah. And there's zombies coming at you and they're all like ah, from every direction. And you got like a weapon and a shield, and it's like you got to kill yeah. them. It's very intense. Yeah, that first time you try a VR, I did last year, year before. It's it's definitely different. Yeah, it kind of throws VR you off balance. My, my I was what? just like, I got to kill these zombies. Like yeah. I was going crazy. Everybody was looking at me. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, it throws me off like, balance the first people. time, you know. But it looks cool when it works, you know. Um, all right. I'm going to turn this off here. Take her off. Enough of the news for tonight. So uh, we'll see where this Facebook thing goes. Uh, I think he's done talking in front of Congress. Has any Mark Zuckerberg? I can't remember. All the people are all doing shady stuff with our information. Like Facebook, Welcome to Google, Spynet, the Spynet, Amazon, yeah. Microsoft, yeah. Apple. I don't trust none of them. I just stopped caring about privacy stuff because it's going to get worse as the day as the year goes on to the point where you data just data 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 collection is is mm -hmm. profitable i guess what can i say you know. good thing that i'm a i'm a database programmer so you know what's going on yeah so, so yeah i'm valuable i'm very i'm valuable in today's uh, society exactly all right, it is 10.30, so I think I want to wrap this up for tonight. Guys, thank you for joining me and uh, the guests from before, me. DT and uh, Ben. Thank you. Everybody in the chat room, great. Always enjoy doing these chats. So uh, I don't know when the next one will be. Just uh, make sure you got the notification bell when it works. Make sure it's turned on, you know. But um, I might do a Windows Wednesday. Maybe Windows Wednesday? Oh, Windows. alliteration. I like alliteration. Alliteration Windows Wednesday. I might do that yeah, this Wednesday. Yeah, I'll probably not work that time. Yeah, I might. I don't know. That depends. I mean, if the weather's going to be crappy, probably will. But if not, I try to do a daily tech brief, like a one minute or so news of the day. I invest something new for the channel just to keep up on what's going on versus a weekly tech update and doing a longer one. But I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to do those. Um, I'm going to test... Um, I download... What did I download? I downloaded... Voyager Linux, I think it's called. It's a French distro. I'll take a look at that. It looks pretty good. Voyager Linux, yeah. I think I've heard uh, some good things about it. Yeah, it looks it looks different. It looks colorful, to say the least. So I'll, I'll take a look at that. That may be the next thing I'll do. All right, well, that's it. Coding, Lamer, have a good night, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one, okay? All right, see you all later. Bye-bye. Okay.